welcome back to my channel. My name is Meg and I'm a lover of all things beauty and makeup, especially eyeshadow palettes. So of course, I own a lot of them. So I thought it would be fun to do a declutter on here. I was already going through and trying to decide what palettes I really wanted to hang on to now that my collection has grown so much and you know just not hold on to things that I wasn't using or just didn't spark inspiration for me. So I thought rather than just kind of doing it myself, I would come on here and share it with you. Um, start off with uh, any palettes that I am getting rid of, um, I will be giving to friends and family. So please don't ask for anything in the comments. Uh, I just don't really, I'm not in the position to send makeup to people. Uh, and I just really don't want to send used makeup to people. So um, those that's what will be happening with anything I am decluttering um, if it is a palette that you really love I'm just so happy for you that you love it and that it works for you for one reason or another it's just something that doesn't work for me um, or I just it's not really in my wheelhouse of what I would use so there's no point in sitting on my shelf Anyways, without further ado, let's get into it. Um, this will probably be a long video, so make sure to get a snack, get a drink, and stay tuned because we'll be here for a while. All right, so it's my first time ever filming this way, so hopefully it's <laughs> not a hot mess. Um, with uh, how I'm going to go through all my palettes is I'm really going to try to group everything together in um, like with like a full brand together um, just so I'm not bouncing all around all over the place but there's still no guarantee I could end up finding some stragglers that got lost in another place in my collection uh, so that's the plan but don't hold me to it uh, it could get messed up uh, so to start off with I'm gonna start off with the only palette that I have from Alamar Cosmetics. Um, this is the Spanglish palette. I got this uh, in a boxy charm, I believe, um, and I was really excited. I might have even bought it from like their, um, like sort of their pop-up shop that they always did. Um, I don't know if I actually got it like in the box itself. Uh, I was really excited to try the brand. I just always heard really good things. Um, this is at the time where I was watching a lot of Kathleen Lights and she always just went on and on about the brand. Uh, so I really wanted to try it and it really is a pretty color story and like nothing nothing wrong with the formula I just wasn't wowed by this so I can tell you right now I'm going to declutter this okay next we have the Juvia's Place palettes I have I used to actually own like basically all of these six pan palettes um, but I have just slowly over time decluttered the other ones. So what I'm left with are these three. So to start off with, we have the Berries palette, and this is just a really beautiful, deep berry <laughs> uh, color story. Really beautiful. I like the Juvia's Place um, formula, but I just, oh, I never, I never reach for this. And I feel like I have these shades in other palettes and other formulas that I'm really drawn to. So I am going to, I'm going to get rid of it. We're going to declare that. Uh, and then we have the Mauve's palette. Oh, this is so beautiful. I absolutely adore this shimmer here. Um, really gorgeous color story. I am, ooh. I'm not sure. I'm going to put this in the maybe pile. I'm not, I'm, I'm not 100% sure yet. And then the last one we have is the uh, Sweet Pinks palette. This is it here. This is actually untouched. Um, I actually believe that I had this palette and decluttered it. And then I had won a giveaway and had gotten this palette again through that. And it is a really beautiful, beautiful palette. But I decluttered it once already. I think... I just, I, I already knew I, I don't want this in my collection anymore. So I am going to declutter that. You know what? We're going to, we're going to declutter the mobs, mobs, whatever, uh, how you say it, palette as well. I just, I haven't reached for this and I don't even know how long. So I'm probably, I'm probably not going to reach for it again. 
Okay, next we have the two palettes I have from Midas Cosmetics, which sadly I don't believe they even exist anymore. Um, to start off with, we have this Flower Bomb palette. I'm being careful because when I opened this up the other day, I discovered that um, a couple of the shades aren't really glued in anymore. Um, I think this is beautiful, but I never use this. Like since I've gotten it, I think I've used it once and I've never touched it again. I don't even mind that there's pressed glitters in here. I am someone who is probably in the small group of people who actually like a pressed glitter. So I don't mind this at all, um, that at all, but I just, it's not a color story that draws me in. I feel like I just look at it and I'm kind of unsure of what I wanna do with it. Um, so I am going to pass this along. Um, and then we have the Perception palette, which I believe this was done in collaboration with the Basic B. That's what it says. I was trying to read the cover. Here's that one. Really gorgeous. I think I am going to hold on to this for a bit longer. I'm not quite ready to say no to this palette yet. Um, it is really gorgeous. I am a lot more inspired by this color story. Um, and even though it's not something that I necessarily would feature a lot on any of my channels, um, just because the brand doesn't exist anymore, I just, I'm, I'm not ready to say goodbye to it yet. So I'm going to hold on to this one. Okay, next, probably one of the brands I own the most from, Mel Cosmetics. So set this basket to the side and let's start grabbing them out. So to start off with, we have the Fatal Yours eyeshadow palette that they did in collaboration with Bailey Sarian. I just got this. I am definitely not getting rid of this. I'm probably not getting rid of any of my melt palettes, even if I don't use them very much. I just, they're like my favorite, one of my favorite brands. So I probably not going to part with any of these, but absolutely love this. It is going nowhere. Next we have the Amori Mary Posa palette. I actually, when I first saw this, I was not super thrilled. Um, and I still don't really love that they did this whole different format to it. But at the same time, like, you know what? Brands have got to try different things. If they do the same thing all the time, people are going to get annoyed with that too. And it's going to get a little bit repetitive. So I will give them, like, you know, credit for trying something different, even if I don't love the format that they did with this. But I think the color story is really beautiful. Um, I really do need to reach for this more, uh, but definitely going to keep that one. Then we have, um, I think my Vita one is dug in there somewhere, but we have the Muerte palette. I adore this palette. This is, to me, it's definitely probably their most hyped up and most one of their most wonderful palettes in my opinion. It's probably one of my most used ones from them. I absolutely adore it. Um, yes, I don't think, like, I think when this came out, it was a lot more unique and I definitely think a lot of indie brand, other indie brands have, um, come, it's like stepped up to the plate and like really matched, um, and even probably improved on, uh, this color story, but I love it. I absolutely love the packaging and theming. This is never going anywhere. I'm actually even tempted to buy a new one while it's available, but I don't know. I'm probably gonna try to Try not to do that. Try not to overbuy makeup. Uh, next, we have the Electrip palette. This is it. I really liked this color story. Um, mostly also just because I thought it was something um, that is a bit different for Melt. Um, I, they can get kind of repetitive with their color stories. It's the only thing I get a bit fresher with the brand, especially because I do own almost everything from them. Um, I really like this. I thought the quality is really great. I haven't played with it a lot just because it's hasn't been as exciting as other palettes that have come out um, that I've been just more inclined to reach for, but I do really like this and I'm going to hold on to that. Next we have the 27 palette, which I believe they did. This came out um, for one of the owners, um, Dana's, uh, Dana Bomar's birthday. And so this was like her kind of birthday palette and it really is beautiful. I think it's a gorgeous neutral palette. I don't play with it a lot because I don't play with neutral palettes a lot, but the quality is amazing. If I'm going to reach for a neutral palette, I definitely want it to be one like this. And then we have the Nightmare Before Christmas palettes. So I guess first we'll go with Halloween Town because that came out first. So gorgeous packaging. And then here it is on the inside. I 
did not like this palette when I first saw the promo photos. I was just like, that is so disappointing. And then when I started seeing, um, seeing it in action, and then when I saw their photos that they put on their website, I was just like, oh, wow, that's actually really interesting. Uh, so I got, and I already knew I was going to get it anyways, but I just wasn't as thrilled about the color story. But I really love it. I'm super happy with what they created here. Um, it performs really beautifully, and I'm happy to have that in my collection. And then the Christmas Town palette. I'll try to see if that changes. Um, this is the color story for that. Absolutely gorgeous. This is so fun. Um, I just, it performs beautifully, the toppery kind of shades in it. So um, I believe that is uh, this one, this one, and this one. <laughs> Sorry, I can't remember the names. I'm just trying to read them from here is a little difficult. But uh, those are absolutely stunning. And I am just super in love with this palette. So of course, not going anywhere. Ooh, next. This is a oldie but a goodie, and I don't know if they ever did any other, I don't think they ever did any other eyeshadows in this packaging, but this was their Impulsive palette, which has long since been discontinued. I actually think I found this at Sephora, and this is her, and even though I do not reach for it very much, there's just something about this color story in this palette that just makes me so happy that I just, I don't know if I could ever part with it. Um, I, I think the one reason why I don't reach for it a lot is, which is funny because Melt is normally a lot matte heavier. It is a very shimmer heavy palette. Um, and they're not like necessarily super special shimmers either. So, uh, I just, I don't reach for it a lot. I really should use this more, but this thing is beautiful and I am so happy that I was able to get it before it was gone. Next, we have the Gemini, and I have it in the original packaging. I was kind of tempted to rebuy it in the new packaging, but I actually really like this packaging, so I hold on to this one. Um, who knows? Maybe I'll get a new one eventually, but again, just like with the Muerte, probably not. Uh, here is just a gorgeous, greeny, neutral, grungy color story. You've probably seen this a million times over. Keeping that love in, we have the 420 palette. This is what it looks like on the inside. Um, I was not sold on this palette right away. I think I only picked it up during a sale and it was just because I used to, and I say used to because I'm really trying not to be this way anymore, um, but have very much like a collectionist sort of like standpoint, you know, um, I just was always wanting to pick stuff up. Um, and just if I loved a brand, I wanted to have it all. And so I grabbed this one and I really do like it a lot more in person than I did when it originally launched. Um, I don't use it very much and I don't know, we'll see. I'm not ready to declutter any of my melt palettes right now, but I don't know. In the future, this might be one that eventually goes. The quality's fine. It's great, but it's just not a color story that I'm super drawn to. Next, we have the She's in Parties palette. And this is probably one of like the first melt palettes I ever got. And it is just such a gorgeous, vampy, just, oh, I don't even know, like almost like gothic feel, um, sort of a color story. I absolutely love it. This is one of my absolute favorite color stories from them. Um, I used to use this a lot. I haven't used it in a while. I really need to take bring it back out um, and like maybe pair it up with some sort of a special shimmer even from another brand, even if I have to, but just really give these mattes a chance to shine because it is gorgeous. Then we have the Mary Jane palette. This is just such a gorgeous, cool tone color story. I absolutely love it. Oh, here we go. Here's the Lita palette. Um, so I love Muerte more when it came to this collection, but I just am so happy I have both of them, especially since this one never came back. Maybe it's because it just wasn't in as much demand as Muerte is. Um, but I absolutely love this. These like sort of cool tone browns in here are just so magical. I, I don't know. I just really like them. It's really fun, fun color story. The Dark Matter palette. This is, oh yeah, let's get rid of that right now. This is really a lot of fun, really great quality. I really liked this palette. Um, I haven't played with it much though since. Seems to be like the story with all my melt palettes. Um, I should I need to play with this again soon. It is 
really awesome. The Radioactive palette. I was late to the game in getting this and I was able to nab it, I think actually from Sephora before it went like completely like discontinued and unavailable. Like I don't think it's on there anymore. Um, but this is a lot of fun, super bright, colorful palette. It's just a really great version of a rainbow palette. Um, I don't use it as much, <laughs> but um, I really love it. I Every time I look at it, I just really think it's beautiful. So not getting rid of that. <laughs> I should probably just stop saying that because I'm, I'm not getting rid of any of these. Uh, here is the brunette palette, which I had gotten again, sort of like on sale with a bundle. Um, and so I gotten some of their brushes too, which I use their brushes all the time. Uh, but this is a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> although I probably, I probably should declutter it because it is completely untouched. Uh, I'm just not ready to say goodbye to it yet. So I don't know. We'll see. Um, maybe actually, you know what, I might put this in, I might put this in my maybe pile. I didn't think I was going to get rid of any melt palettes, but let's be honest, if I'm not using it, I probably shouldn't have it in my collection. So put that over there. Next we have the smoke session. Gorgeous. I love this a lot. Um, the only thing is that it only really has the two mattes and then a bunch of shimmers. So it's not really a palette that I reach for a lot because of that. Um, I don't mind mixing palettes, but I just don't automatically go to do it. I probably, I probably should get in the habit of mixing my palettes more because I think I would get more use out of my melt palettes if I mix them just because I think like sometimes it's like, oh, this matte from here and that matte from there and then this shimmer. Um, and you can make something magical. Thanks. <laughs> then the Millennial Pinks palette. I really like this color story. I will say out of all my melt palettes, this is the one where it's not even like I feel like the shadows perform badly, but I just, I, I'm always kind of meh about the looks that I create. I haven't really created something that I thought was absolutely amazing with this, but I also do really like the color story and I just, I'm... <sighs> I'm not ready to let go yet, but, um, I, the great palette, but I just, I don't know. I, I probably should declutter it, but I'm, I'm not ready to say goodbye to that one yet. Uh, then we have the rest palette. Gorgeous. This is one of their like classic palettes, like OGs. I really like this. It's a lot of fun keeping it. And then we have the Gemini 2, which, uh, I know you're going to see Mateo there. I probably should just declutter this palette um, because who knows? Um, I reached out to Mel about this. They said it wasn't mold. They said that it was um, uh, something with like the wax and it's like the wax crystals or something separating and rising to the top. Um, and they were really great. And they actually sent me a gift card. They, well, they offered to like send me another palette um, of my choice because they don't have this one in stock anymore. Um, and then, uh, I, but I own everything. So I was like, well, I already have all the palettes, so that's okay. And then they kindly sent me a gift card, um, for the value of this. So I'm holding on to that for the next time that something comes out that I really want. Uh, but, oh, I don't know. It's so gorgeous. But at the same time, like, do I have to worry about the whole palette being contaminated? I might have to say goodbye to this one. All right, we're gonna put that over there. And I am gonna, I think I said that I put this in my maybe pile. I am gonna declutter the brunette palette just because I haven't even touched it. So I'm, it's probably time I say goodbye to that. I almost missed them, but my Mel Beetlejuice palettes, um, it will forever be my regret that I did not get this whole collection, but I did pick up both palettes. So we have the waiting room. Let's try to get her open. It's got the really nice, um, cool insert um, that they did. And then here it is. I love red eyeshadows. So I absolutely adore this color story and think this is so fun and beautiful. And it is going nowhere ever. Um, and then we have the recently deceased, which oh, goes that like that um my only qualm about this palette um other than like some of the purples seeming a little bit repetitive uh it's just that I don't know why they didn't make it the same size as they did the waiting room one um I 
I don't know why they didn't just shove two more shades in there to make them the same size and you probably just could have gotten a little bit more variety and dimension in the color story but I still really love it. Um, I uh, just think it's a beautiful palette, gorgeous, um, gorgeous formula and this is never going anywhere. I'm keeping these forever. Okay, next we have Nomad Cosmetics. I only own three from them and not getting rid of any of these. Uh, first, we have the Royal Europe palette. This is so gorgeous. I just love the selection of mattes. Um, could there have been maybe something like a little bit lighter in here to blend with? Sure, but I think you can still work with these really great. And those multi-chromes on the bottom for the shimmers are absolutely stunning. I adore this and I just uh, recently did a look with this. Um, it's actually the look I'm wearing in my intro and outro for this video and I absolutely love it. So that is staying. Next we have the, um, what's this called again? The Verona Amor Immorte. I'm probably butchering that anyways. Uh, it is like the Romeo and Juliet palette and it opens up like this. So it's like we have, I think it's supposed to be like love and death is what it stands for. Um, so there's just supposed to be like the two sides to it. I freaking love this color story. Um, I Oh, I just, I love all those like pinks and like almost like, corally pinks. Um, and then just like those moody colors on the other side. Oh, it's just the most beautiful color story. I really think that they knocked it out of the park with this um, and just created something really interesting and dynamic. Um, I didn't like have too much of an issue with anything. I feel like um, maybe some of my shimmers were a little hard pressed, but nothing where I can't work with it. Um, I really just probably haven't given this palette enough love just because of the amount of eyeshadow palettes in my collection. Uh, but I am definitely going to be playing with this again soon and absolutely adore it. So that's going nowhere. And then next we have, I think this was like their last year's Halloween release, but I, it could be wrong, but I think it was last year. And this is the Haunted Europe and it looks like this. It's just really, um, kind of like grungy, spooky, um, a little bit dusty, um, in some, like, and not in a bad way, but just, um, I don't, I don't know how to describe this properly, uh, uh, but like definitely not as much pop, um, to the shades. Uh, I feel like dusty was the wrong word to say, uh, but it really is beautiful. Um, it's not the one I reach for like the most out of them, but I'm really enjoying the Nomad formula um, and just uh, getting to know their palettes. So I want to hold on to all the ones I have from them. So I am definitely going to hold on to this as well. We have Glam Light. I've got a few from them. Uh, it might be time to say goodbye to some of these. I don't know. Well, <laughs> let's let's see what happens. Um, first, we have the Glam Light and Chucky Crazy in Love palette. I just this packaging is just everything. And then here it is on the inside. It's definitely a very dark palette. Um, I know that, that was a complaint that a lot of people had was that it's just super dark and there's just not really like inner corner highlight shades and easy to blend out shades and everything can kind of look sort of the same once it's on your eyes. And I agree with that wholeheartedly, but I don't mind. Um, I just think that I have so many bright, colorful and light shades and other palettes from Glam Light that I just, I love this palette enough and I don't mind having to drop, pull something else in from the brand um, to make it work more. Um, and I've done a couple looks with this and haven't done that yet. So I think if I got myself to do that, I'd get even more use out of it, but I really like this and I'm going to hold on to it. Next, we have the two Scooby-Doo ones. So we have the Creeps and Crawls palette. Um, and this is really gorgeous, like just a beautiful jewel toned um, just color story. I think it's beautiful. The shimmers, the Glam Light shimmers are some of my favorite shimmer formula. Like I think they're so gorgeous, um, especially like in person, like the shimmers are always just like breathtaking. Um, I am going to hold on to this palette, even though I do find that I never reach for it just because it also is really dark. Um, and I just, 
I don't know. I, I also like waited absolutely forever for these to come to me and it put a little bit of a bad taste in my mouth, even actually with the Chucky one that happened to me too. Like my order took like well over a month um, to get to me. Um, I just, I hear that from other people that Glamlight has really long shipping. Um, but I just also found when I reached out to the brand about it, they just like the customer service was just kind of like, yeah, whatever. It's not our problem. Uh, so, um, I don't really buy a whole lot of uh, stuff from them anymore just because I don't want to deal with that shipping nightmare. Uh, and just being in Canada, it's just not worth the extra long wait. Uh, but I, I think this is beautiful and it's nothing against the palette. Um, and I am going to hold on to it cause I'm not ready to say like goodbye to this yet, but, um, I do every time I look at these palettes, I do think about that a bit. So I don't know, maybe that's one reason why I don't reach for them as much. And then this is the Rot Row Reggae one. It is a gorgeous like green with like blue color story, a little bit lighter. So it's probably a little bit more, um, versatile for people. Um, really beautiful and holding on to that one as well. Then we got the ice cream palette and it's this, it's like their pastel palette, really beautiful. Um, I've had a lot of fun with this. I think I even used this shade down here as a blush, which is why it's extra messy. Um, a lot of fun. I really like this and I am going to hold on to that. Then we have, this was the first Michaela palette and it looks like this really gorgeous um I think I'm gonna put this in my maybe pile I just I never reach for this and it is a big palette and I do feel like I kind of I look at it and although it's beautiful I don't know I I feel like I'm leaning towards keeping it just because I don't know if I'm ready to let it go yet uh but I I don't know I'm on the fence with it so I'm gonna put this in my maybe pile create a maybe pile um, and then we have the, you know what, actually let's first do the Michaela Pot 2. Uh, and it's like this, very green um, with a bit of pop of blue and purple in it. Um, really gorgeous palette. Um, I think this one also is going to go into my maybe pile for the same reason. It is gorgeous. I just, I don't know, I, I'm never inspired to grab it. Um, so I probably should declutter it, uh, for that reason. But I just, again, like the glam light formula is just so amazing that I have a hard time saying goodbye to anything. Um, and then we have the cake palette, which is this, it's just a gorgeous sort of rainbow palette. Um, and I didn't really know if I was going to say goodbye to any of my glam light, uh, palettes, but I, I think it's time to say goodbye to this. I never reach for this. Um, and I just have so many other like rainbow sort of palettes in my collection, even just amongst like this brand, uh, that I'm, I'm ready to say goodbye to that one. So we will pass that along. And then we have the Barbie palette, which this one surprised me with how much I enjoyed this palette. Um, I didn't get it when it first came out. Cause I don't know. I just was kind of like, yeah, whatever Barbie collection. Uh, that's not really something that's drawing me in. And just the more I saw this color story, the more I just fell in love with it. They just did some really interesting choices with this because it's like we've got like the Barbie pinks and then some really beautiful purples and teals and that. And then just like some of these like neutral shades that they included, like just having sort of like these like mustardy tones. I don't know. It just makes it really interesting. So I actually had a lot of fun with this. Um, there was even one time where I did, I think... I think it was like a reel or something somewhere on Instagram or TikTok. I did like a, I think a bit of a palette bingo sort of with this. Um, and I had a lot of fun creating that look. So I am going to hold on to, to that. I really hope all this has been filming well, cause this is going to be a really long video and I'm not really going to know until later how well this went. I really hope I don't have to refilm it all. Anyways, now we have um, our my BH Cosmetics palettes, um, which I haven't really like featured a lot on any of my platforms, even though like I really loved the formula um, and the aesthetic of a lot of the stuff that they came out with. Uh, but just with the brand like kind of going out of business and then sort of coming back, but then like they haven't really done anything much um, and at least anything that's caught my eye. Um, I really 
barely use them, but I think there's some of these that I'm still not ready to let go of, but let's, let's go through them all. Um, so we have the three palettes that I have from the ice cream collection, and I'm not going to lie. Part of me still wishes that I had gotten all of them. Like, I think that there was like a sugar cone, like kind of one that was like a brown neutrals, um, but just like the golds that were in it were so beautiful. And then I think another was it like a cotton candy or something where it was like more of like the pinks and whatever I wish I had those I don't you definitely can't get them anymore um but the three I do have uh so I've got the cherry on top which is a gorgeous like red but like pinky and peach color story so it's like monochromatic but to me it's got enough variation in it and stuff that I think it's really beautiful I still really love this and I'm not ready to let go of this so I'm not going to Right. And then we have the sweet, um, oh yeah, it's the sweet shop. Sorry, I was going to say sweet pistachio, sweet shop. Uh, but the pistachio palette, which is like their green one, this one definitely is like more monochromatic, um, but is really beautiful. And again, I just, I'm not ready to let go of these. I just, I coveted them so much and I still cherish them. Um, and I just, even just like, you know, even for nostalgia reasons, I'm just not ready to let go of these. Uh, and then we have the bubblegum, which is the blue. And I'm not generally drawn to like blue eyeshadows. Um, if anything, it's something I've avoided a lot. I'm um, just probably having blue eyes. I just always didn't want blue shadows on too. But there was something about this one that just really drew me in. And I just have had a lot of fun with this. So I'm going to hold on to that. And then we have the 90s Remix Dance palette. I think that's what it's called anyways. Um, really fun um, pastels. Uh, just I think this is really nice. Um, I really like the shimmers and I'm just for a pastel -y kind of leaning palette. I'm just not ready to let go of this yet. So I'm going to hold on to that. And then the 80s Remix Dance palette. Just more like neons in that. Um, with this one, hmm, I might might be ready to say goodbye to this one. I really like the 90s one. I thought I was going to want to hold on to all three of these, but I feel like if I do, it's just to collect them. Whereas in like, I really, this is pretty, but it's just not colors that I'm not going to reach for it much in this palette. So I think I'm going to say goodbye to that one. And then we have the 2000s remix and it's just these beautiful like purples um, sort of like very like glam style, which I really like. And I just, I still really like this. So I'm going to hold on to that one. And then we have the two from, I think, I'm trying to remember what this was called. I think it was like some sort of like a brunch collection. Um, we have the mimosa palette, which I coveted this for so long. I hunted this down and I finally found it at like a winner's um, and nabbed it up right when I saw it and had fun with it. But like, I feel like once I had it, I was just kind of like, okay, yeah, whatever. Um, and then never really reached for it. So as much as I loved this, um, I just, I, it's not something I reached for. So I'm going to say goodbye. And then we have the blueberry muffin palette, which um, although everyone else kept raving about it, I was kind of like, yeah, whatever. And then I don't know when I grabbed it because I came across it, I think probably at the same time as the Mimosa one. Um, and the color stories definitely like in person, I totally see what people mean. Um, it is a really nice color story, but again, I just compared to other palettes in my collection, I just never reach for it and I just know I won't. So I'm going to pass that along to Kate. Lastly, we have the Zodiac palette. This was the first one that they did. I believe they did at least one other one. Um, it was like, I think more like love themed or whatever, but I only got this one here it is. It really is like beautiful. I had no like issues with the shadows at all, but it is just so big. And the way the color story is laid out, it's just not something that inspires me. So I think it's just time to pass this along to someone else who's going to get some use out of it. Okay, next we have my palettes from Be Perfect. So to start off with, we have the Carnival. This was the most recent palette, I believe, uh, with Stacey Marie. The only ones I have from Be Perfect are like the Stacey Marie palettes. And this is it. I absolutely adore this. Um, I haven't used it as much recently just because there's been a lot of other stuff I've been gravitating towards, but I still absolutely love this palette. The shimmers are so gorgeous. The mattes 
like all of the Be Perfect ones I've tried just blend so beautifully. Um, I just love the color story, like these, these cool grays and taupes and that, um, along with all these bright rainbowy shades. I just, it's gorgeous. And I think this is a great color story and that is staying in my collection. Um, next we have the Carnival Antidote one. Um, I believe this is number four. Uh, and this is like their warm toned palette. I really love this, performs great. I really need to get more use out of this. It's really gonna be my ongoing thing with all of this is I need to use them more. Um, but I'm hoping that I will reach for this more now that my collection's gonna be dwindled down a bit more. Um, I really love this. Um, I, I don't gravitate towards warm tones a whole lot. So it's probably one of the reasons why I haven't reached for this a ton but I really do like this. I love the quality and I'm not ready to let go of that yet. Next we have the Carnival 3 Love Tahiti. Um, this is just a gorgeous, perfect, vibrant rainbow palette. I love this. Again, I haven't used it as much as of late, but I really need to start grabbing this out again and uh, start utilizing it because it is beautiful. And lastly, we have, this was the first ever one I had gotten from them, and this is the Carnival um, XL Pro palette. Um, I think that this was like technically like the second one. Um, gorgeous, absolutely love this. I'm almost debating if maybe I should let this one go. Um, I love all the other ones, and I just, I feel like I've got these shades covered with the other palettes from the brand. Um, I never reach for these. I don't like combinations of eyeshadows and um, face products in the same palette just because I never think to use the uh, face products in an eyeshadow palette. So um, maybe sometimes I'll use an eyeshadow as a face product, but I just, I don't know, it's not something I really like. Um, to me, it's just a waste of space. I would have either rather had the palette be a bit smaller or um, have uh or have more eyeshadow shades in place of those so I, I don't love that those are there and I never use those highlighters um so I'm gonna put this in my maybe pile but I have a sneaking suspicion that we're gonna finally be saying goodbye to this palette somehow I totally missed the melt zodiac palettes when I was doing my melt palettes so here they all are uh first we have the fire palette really beautiful. Um, I'm going to put this in my maybe pile um, just because I'm having a hard time saying goodbye to like any melt palettes, but I really have, like I, I got this really just to get them all and complete the collection. I don't really gravitate towards warm tones like this and it's just not a palette that inspires me. So I probably should say goodbye, but I need to think on it for a few moments. Um, then we have the earth palette, which one thing I loved about this was that it seemed like um, it was a great uh, sort of hopefully better formula version of the ABH subculture palette. It just had like those warm tones mixed with like the teal um, and all that. I just thought this was really beautiful, um, but I never reach for it. So I'm going to put this in my maybe pile as well. Then we have the water palette, which again, like I was saying earlier with that uh, BH Cosmetics Bubblegum Palette. I'm not really someone who gravitates towards blues, um, especially like blue monochromatic palettes because it's just a lot of blue. Uh, I just, I don't know. I Because of that, I never really reach for this, but I also like having these colors available in the Melt Formula if I want them. So I'm also going to put this in the maybe pile. And this by far is the one that I loved like absolutely loved from the collection. This was um, the only one I had gotten originally when they all released because it was the only color story that I found interesting it is the air, which also I might be a bit biased because I'm an Aquarius, so this is my sign. Um, and I absolutely love this mix of the purples and like the corally peaches. I think this is a really interesting color story, especially for being a small palette. Um, it's just nice to have a lot of versatility in it. Um, not that like, well, I don't know. I say not that you can create like a ton of different looks, but actually I'm sure you probably could create a bunch of different looks with this. Um, I really want to play with this more. I still really love this. So I am hundred percent keeping this one and then I'll think about the other ones and see if they're going to survive as well. Um, this is my only palette from L.E.J. Beauty. This is the, I think this is called the, just the shift 
palette, if I'm not mistaken. Um, it is an all shimmer, like duo and multi-chrome palette, really gorgeous. Um, these perform absolutely beautifully. Uh, I don't reach for it as much just because sometimes I'm bad at remembering um, all shimmer palettes, but I love this, love the formula, love being also to be able to support a small independent brand, um, and I just definitely need to hold on to that to play with it more. Next, we have this uh, Sugar Pill Fun Size Palette. Um, this is a lot of fun. I think it's a really neat take on a pastel palette. Um, again, I don't really use it as much, uh, but I think something like this would pair really beautifully with the L.E.J. Beauty uh, palette. So I'm not ready to say goodbye to this. I just love the tones in it, and it's just something that I think is really special to my collection. So I'm going to hold on to that. Next, we have the MAC Cosmetics. This is the, the Void eyeshadow palette um, from their MAC Stranger Things um, collab. And it is, it's fun. This is a palette that I actually got just sort of as like a little like freebie bonus when I was uh, shopping at the cosmetics store. Um, so I just figured why not, um, you know, if I'm going to get it for free, I'll just nab it up and I can give it a try. I have yet to use this, but um, I think think it's a fun, funky color story, and I haven't really tried MAC eyeshadows in a long time, so I'm going to hold on to this for now, but I don't know. I'm I'm not blown away by the color story, so I don't know if this is something that's going to survive in my collection for a long time, but I still really want to play with it at least once. All I've done is swatch it. Next, we have the Tati Beauty Volume 1. I'm still so sad that stuff never worked out and she ended up having to like close her brand because with this palette, I was just so excited to see where the brand was going to go. These are just such beautiful shadows, um, in my opinion. I think that the mattes blend beautifully and then I just love that there is just I, I love how she did this, where there's just the assortment, like the, um, like a different, a bit of a different formula um, in each of the shades, and then everything's just laid out. I don't normally like like these kind of like monochromatic gradient rows sort of thing. Um, it's not something I find very inspiring, uh, but I I like it laid out in this palette just because I think it just makes it um, really user friendly and just really lets you kind of think about where you want to go with it. It's not a palette that I use a lot, especially because it's not available anymore. The brand doesn't even exist anymore, so I just don't tend to feature a lot of um, stuff like that like on my platforms uh, but I I just not ready to let go of this I don't know if I ever will um, just because I think I'd be sad that I can't get it again so holding on to that and then we have the two palettes that I have from um, uh, Spoiled Lips Cosmetics oh, I forgot the brand name for a second there um, this is their uh, I don't know if like the palette itself has a name. It doesn't at least on the on here. It's called the Volume 18 though, because um, essentially like they are um, primarily like a, a subscription service, and so you can like sign up to like have like I think it's bi monthly. They send a palette to you, um, so they'll have different volumes. And this was like this like really funky kind of grungy, somewhat pastel monster themed one. Um, it is super cute. Uh, I'm just, my only thing though is I just, I do find that, um, I don't know, like just the, everything seems kind of mid-tone. There's nothing too deep, nothing too light. Um, and I just, I don't know. So I'm going to put this in my maybe pile, but I'm, I'm, I never reach for it. And every time I look at it, I'm always kind of like, yeah, it's cute, but I'm not inspired. Uh, and then we have the Call Me palette, like their like screen palette comes off like that. I don't, I don't love packaging like that where like the top completely comes off, but it's also like not the worst thing. Um, this one, although also like very like kind of more so mid-tone in shades, I do find that the variation of shades interests me a little bit more and I find the shimmers really magical in this. So I'm definitely holding on to this one. I'm not ready to let it go. Like, oh, this matte green right here just gives me all the feels. I love a shade like that. Um, so I think I could have a lot more fun with this. And hopefully, again, with my collection being a bit smaller, um, maybe I will be able to showcase this a little bit more. All right, next we have my Morphe palettes. 
First off, we have the Morphe and Ashley Strong. This is the Affirmation Magic Artistry Palette. It opens up like this. Um, this is something where it was like an impulse buy for me from Winners. I do think that the color story is pretty and I do like that it is a smaller palette. Um, normally I'm not gravitated towards the smaller palettes from Morphe, but this one really caught my eye. I decided to finally grab it. All I've done is swatch it. I've had no inspiration to use it and I just think it's just I might as well pass it along so I am going to pass that along All right next we have I have both of the Jaclyn Hill palettes like not her favorite palette that she did with Morphe where she was just like selecting shades that pre-existed um, that were her favorite I never got that um, but I got both of the ones that she created with them so we have the volume one palette which this is just like ridiculously old like I don't even I, I'm gonna get rid of this. I never use it. Um, it's not a color story. Like it's very neutral leaning with just like the slightest bit of pop of color. I um, mean, it's also very old. So I don't even think this sh probably should be used on eyes anymore. So I'm not even just going to get rid of this. I'm actually going to end up throwing this away. Um, I also just, you know, I'm not going to get into it, but I also don't really want to feature Jaclyn Hill on my platform. Um, so it's something I am going to take out of my collection. Um, this is the Volume 2 palette. Um, I was a lot more drawn to this one. It was really bright and beautiful, um, gorgeous shades. Um, I do find that because of the pigmentation, it wasn't always the easiest to work with. Um, but again, reasons just mentioned, um, not really featuring uh, products from this person. Um, and it's just, I'm, I don't really gravitate towards large palettes like this anymore. So I'm going to pass that along. Um, next we have the 35D Desert Bouquet one. Um, this one was a lot more intriguing to me. I loved the mix of like the pinks and like the berries along with the greens and that. Um, really pretty. But again, I just don't really reach for these big kind of palettes. And just when it comes down to it, like the Morphe formula is not so amazing that it makes me want to play with it more than a lot of other like palettes that I have in my collection. So it's just, it just sits there and I probably should have never bought it. I am going to pass that along. Um, the Disney uh, Mickey and Friends palette, really bright, colorful, you know, some beautiful shades in here. But again, like I think I've like swatched this only. Um, it again was an impulse buy from Winners. I probably should have just not have gotten it, but when I see something on sale and a lot of bright, pretty colors, I am just like a moth to a flame and I can't help it, but I'm gonna pass that along. And then we have, this is the 35M Boss Mood. Um, this was one of my first like large palettes, I'm gonna try not to blind you with the background, uh, from Morphe. Um, I still remember like ordering this online from Ulta and I was just so excited to get it. Um, really gorgeous, um, like color story, um, at least like, you know, I feel like it was a really gorgeous color story. Like really looking at it now, it's a little bit meh. Um, it's not something I reach for at all anymore and it is also pretty old. So I'm going to pass that along. Then we have the 35C Everyday Chic. And I've also like, just to say, I've owned other palettes from Morphe and have decluttered them already. Like I always inevitably declutter my Morphe palettes. So I really should just know better by now not to add them into my collection. Uh, but touching on this one, I think like, you know, if you want like a um, affordable glam palette, I think this is a great choice. Like, you know, I think when it comes to the Morphe formula, like it's not bad. It's just, there's a lot better stuff out there. Um, and it's not like it's like, oh, it's super amazing for the price. Like it's, to me, it costs what, you know, the quality is. <laughs> so um, if even that too, like in my opinion, you should never pay full price for a Morphe palette. Um, if you're going to get one, just wait, because it'll probably end up at your local Winners or TG Maxx or whatever. Anyways, not to hate on the brand, but I just, I don't know. I find that... Um, just their palettes are just way too big and pretty uninspiring to me, especially compared with what um, I can use for my collection. And then the last one is the 35S Sweet Oasis. I actually got like the brushes that came with this too. And I, I'm holding on to those just because I just like having tons of brushes in my collection. Uh, but this, this is pretty, you know, it's nice. But again, like there's a lot of like repetitive colors. Um, it's just, 
not something I reach for. I can get these kinds of shades in a more curated uh, color story in my collection. So I'm going to say goodbye to all of my Morphe palettes. Apparently I forgot I had this one. Uh, this is the Morphe and I think it's Avani Green um, palette where it's like bright and colorful and then the bottom two rows are like those like water activated liners. I have tons of water activated liners um, from like Gabisi um, and uh, Mehron that I love. So I definitely don't need them in a Morphe palette and there's just nothing special about this color story. So just keeping it short and sweet, gonna add this to my declutter. Okay, next we have my palettes from Cara Beauty. So this is the Free Spirit Wild Heart, uh, one of their like duo palettes. Um, oops, sorry, <laughs> looks like this, um, really beautiful and bright color story. Um, again, as I said before, I personally don't mind like a pressed glitter. So that doesn't bug me that there's pressed glitters in this. Um, it is a little bit of a chaotic color story though for me. So I do find that I, I go to reach for this and then I end up picking something else just because I'm kind of like, I just don't know what I want to do with this. Um, so I'm gonna put this in my maybe pile, but I don't know, I just, I never reach for it. So it might be time to say goodbye to it. Uh, next we have, this is the Pro 11 Gentle Teaser um, palette. Looks like this, um, just beautiful, um, sort of peachy, but then like warm tones as well. Again, it is very warm. And as I said before, that's not a color story I'm super drawn to. So I'm actually gonna pass this along. It is beautiful, but it's just, I just, I'm inspired to use it. So I should probably just pass it along. And then my last two from them aren't like really like eyeshadow palettes, but I like use them on my eyes. So I'm going to include them today. And this is their um, Pop That Glitz and then Mega Glitz. They're like just their pressed glitter palettes. And I think these are so fabulous. I actually want like if they have more of these, I want more of them because I think it's just such a fun way to grab some pressed glitter. Like and like a lot of, like they're in kind of like a gel sort of consistency too. So you don't have to have any like glitter adhesive for this. Um, and I just think that they're beautiful, great color selection. So that's Pop That Glitz. And then this is Mega Glitz. And I love these. I always have them like to the side of my vanity just so I can use them um, for like have them within easy reach for any looks where I want to add a little sparkle. Uh, so I am definitely holding on to these. I guess along that lines with like the glitter palette, I have this one from Revolution and I don't remember what this is called anymore and there's nothing on the back, uh, but it's one of their pressed glitter palettes. I just think these are really fun shades. And again, I just leave it to like the side of my vanity so I can grab it when I want to add a little extra sparkle. So holding on to that. Okay, next we have my Unearthly Cosmetics palettes. And I can tell you right now, none of these are going anywhere. This is my like all time favorite brand and I am just holding on to all these, but we will go through them and show them off and maybe just point out what ones are my current favorites or whatever, but yeah, not, not getting rid of any. Start off with, uh, let's touch base on these. These are the three palettes that they did with, I think it was last year. Um, yeah, I think it was last year's Halloween release or was it the year before? I'm getting all of my timelines mixed up. Anyways, this was one of their Halloween releases. This was the Halloween mystery box that they did. And they had these three quads. This is the chilling quad, which is beautiful purples. I don't normally really like quads. I find that they're a bit small for me, but I just love the Unearthly formula so much. And these are so beautiful and I love the packaging. So I will make an exception for those. But uh, normally a quad is not a size of palette that I like. I normally like something that's anywhere from like nine to like 20 pans is like my happy zone. Anyways, this is the Creepy Crawly. So the green, just look at that like gorgeous like acid green there. Oh, so beautiful. And then we have the Thirst Palette, which is like their ready, um, reddish orange kind of one. This is like probably like the least monochromatic of the three, uh, but really beautiful. Love that. And then we have the, I think it's, it's the Daily Grind or just the Grind palette. Anyways, yeah, no, the Daily Grind. Um, so this is like a beautiful like orangey tone one. It's not my favorite palette from them, really. And, it, and that's nothing about like the formula. It's just the color story. It's just very warm. And that's not a color story I'm drawn to, but I do still really like it. The formula is amazing. So holding on to that. 
Then we have the Poison Apple, which you'll notice some of these um, say Alien Cosmetics. They used to be Alien Cosmetics, but they're, they've been Unearthly Cosmetics for a while now. Uh, but some of the palettes I have predate the updated packaging. Um, so this is the Poison Apple. Just again, like their packaging just slays every time. Uh, this is the inside. Um, definitely leaning a bit more on the warm tone side. Um, it's actually pretty similar to the Grind palette. <laughs> um like very similar but still different enough though that I don't think like they dupe each other um it's beautiful interesting it's not one I reach for as much when it comes to the collection one because it's discontinued and also um just it's very warm tone so that's not my go-to this is the um hauntingly glamorous they did with Sydney Nicole Adams and I adore this this was the first ever palette I had gotten from the brand when they showcase this palette and collection like well I say collection it was just a palette um I knew I had to have it in my collection it is so stunning I can't really like hold it up too much because my shade um Elvira here is just absolutely smashed I constantly try to keep repressing it but just it's slowly chipping away and dying um this is a very matte heavy palette like aside from these two like shimmery shades here um it is all mattes and these shimmers like they're beautiful but when it comes to like the shimmers that like we've all come to know from our Nerdly Cosmetics like they're they're like okay like they're beautiful but like they're not absolutely mind-blowing like you know shifty sparkly shimmers um but they are beautiful the beautiful thing about these is that um they make really great highlights um so that's one way I really like utilizing them especially if I'm using this palette uh but the mattes in this like this is one of my favorite matte color stories ever um this is so beautiful I cherish this and I will never get rid of it next we have these were the whatever year wasn't the mystery box. So this was either last year or the year before. Again, I'm losing all sense of time um, for their Halloween collection. And when they showcased that they were doing these, I just about died. I love the packaging. It is so gorgeous. I'm just in love with these. And on top of it, the color stories, like I don't normally keep the sleeves and I'm keeping the sleeves on these. The color stories. So here first we have the Weirdos palette and there is that. Now, this is probably the first one I got. Like, these are the first ones I got from them that had, like, really, really magical shimmers in them. Um, I know some people have had issues with this shade Glamour um, going, like, hard pin and, like, just, like, simply, like, not picking up anymore. I'm not swatching, like, a bunch of stuff. But, like, as you can see, like, mine still is fine. So I never had that issue, thankfully. Um, but this is absolutely gorgeous. I adore this palette and I even am still going to feature these on my platform because I'm I know that some people missed out um it kind of bums people out sometimes but like I love these and I cherish them so much and I'm not gonna let them just collect dust on my shelf so love that one then we have the 1964 which and if I didn't mention that and if you didn't know like that the weirdos is like the craft 1964 is the Munsters so like specifically like Lily from the Munsters and that is this palette, super gorgeous. Um, it's a bit of a different color story. Like sometimes I feel like I look at this and I'm like, hmm, what am I gonna do with that? But I, I kind of like that it sort of challenges me that way. So absolutely stunning, love that one. Oh my gosh, there we go, back in the sleeves. <laughs> and then we have the So Strange, which is the Beetlejuice one with Lydia Dietz on the front there. And there it is, just really vibrant and beautiful, almost sort of like neon leaning. I just really like this, so gorgeous. What else can I say? It's it's amazing and magical and I, I love it. And then this is the one that I was actually least interested in when it came out, but it's since become one of my favorites <laughs> from the release. And this is the Warms My Blood, which is the um, Queen of the Damned. Ugh, get that open. Um, Queen of the Damned uh, one, and it is just the most beautiful version of like a neutral palette ever. I love the pops of red in there, like the grays, the purples, and like, you know, like there's some brown, but it's not overwhelming. And then just like these two rows of absolutely magical shimmers, like even the ones that are like more just like satiny, like Immortality, um, 
are just still so beautiful. Um, and I just, I, I love this. I don't know what else to say. It's absolutely amazing. And uh, that is never, ever, ever going anywhere. Uh, next we have, let's do this one. We have Lore. This was, I believe, like a remastered one. Um, and so I had eventually picked this up. Um, the shade Sphinx specifically always constantly called to me and I just really wanted to have that in my collection. Um, this is a lot of fun. It's a really interesting color story and I think it's something that's really unique to my collection. I'm so happy to have it. Then we have the Don't Be Jelly, like the original um palette of this I don't own like the like new one where it has like the mats and that it's on my wish list but unfortunately I've had to like kind of pause a little bit on how much I'm ordering from Unearthly and it's not because I don't want to support the brand or anything I just like one I'm having to slow down buying makeup in general and then just on top of it I just right now like the shipping is just killing me from some of the brands um and then on top of it generally having customs as well so little bit of a sidetrack there but um I don't really have like much in the way of like their like the newest palettes um just because I I just can't afford it right now uh but we have this don't be jelly so it's this all shimmer duo and multi-chrome beautifulness um just love this it's something that I love to be able to have to utilize with um with other palettes and then we have this is their this year's Halloween collection so rather than being a mystery box they just did like a um, Halloween like collection so it wasn't a mystery um and it was the devour collection and this is the palette from it so beautiful I just love how like vampy and gorgeous but then also with these like really beautiful light shimmers that just complement the mattes so beautifully I adore this I've done several looks with this I've done one already on my channel here and then I know I've done like at least two or three um, other ones on my Instagram slash TikTok so go check that out and then we have that the Valentine's Day um, mystery box palette this is a surrender palette really beautiful um, definitely a little bit more like tame of a color story um when it comes to unearthly uh this is what I'd almost call call like more of like a pink sort of neutral palette from them um so I don't gravitate towards it as much but like it is still really beautiful and like the shadows are just that unearthly cosmetics quality that you know you come to love and expect and I just am really happy to have this in my collection and utilize it <laughs> And then we have the um, the in, in the Dark palette. Um, I think this is, I think they've since remastered this again and it's got like smaller palette uh, pans. Um, this is the one though that was still after the like very first um, go through because I think originally, I don't remember which one, but one of these shimmers was different and the shimmers I think looked very similar to each other. Um, and then they went and changed up um, one of the shimmers so there's uh, definitely a lot more difference between the two now um, this one is very purple this one um, very blue um, but this is just really like dark and gothic and just lovely and I absolutely adore it then we have the witching hour which to me this is like your quintessential like Halloween palette it is just beautiful um not one that I like utilize as much in my collection like when it comes to your earthly palettes it doesn't call to me as much as some of their other ones but I love it I love having these shades in their formula so that is staying next this is actually one of my like most used palettes I think from unearthly and this is the sleepover palette um it is just a beautiful um pinky berry dream um one of the things that is so extra amazing about this with this color story is that so many of these shades like the mattes make such beautiful blushes and these shimmers such gorgeous either blush toppers or highlights so it's just such a multifaceted palette um to me this if you're gonna have one from them this is one of the top ones I recommend it is absolutely beautiful and I adore it then we have the dead of night palette which I have um uh, they've remastered it again uh, since this um, so it is smaller pans um, than than this one and I absolutely love this it is so gorgeous this is such a fun color story um, just like got these like jewel tones and just but like this I don't know I don't know how to describe it it is gorgeous and I think as of right now it is 50% off on their site uh, but that could be over 
by now. And then we have the Strawberry Milk Palette. This is one that I resisted for quite a while. And then I think um, I was able to grab it like on a sale. Um, I don't even know if it's still available. I know it's been in their discontinued section, um, but this is really beautiful. I love it. I think it's a really fun, um, poppy kind of color story. Uh, really fun, especially for like, not that I'm seasonal with my makeup, but this would be a really fun, especially for like spring and summer. So holding on to that. And then we have the Not Normal palette, which I love this. This is just such a grunge lover's dream palette, in my opinion, because I love grungy tones and I love this. Uh, so much fun. Um, it's just a gorgeous palette and I adore this. So keeping that. Start off with, we have this palette from Marc Jacobs. This is their Cherific palette really beautiful packaging in my opinion like I don't know like normally this you wouldn't think this would be pal uh, packaging I'd be drawn to but there's just something in the simplistic beauty of it with this like 3d sort of cherry that I just I, don't know, I love so you press on it and you open it up and there is this it is definitely a soft palette um something that I wouldn't normally be super drawn to but it's the only one I have from the brand and I just think this is a beautiful like go-to palette for like a date night or something. I just really like it and I'm not ready to say goodbye to it. So I'm going to hold on to that. Next, we have the only palette I have so far from Glaminatrix Cosmetics. It's their Sugar and Spice palette. I wanted to try this brand for so long. And then finally, when um, this palette came out, I just bit the bullet and had to go for it. And I fell in love with their formula. The mattes blend so gorgeously and these shimmers are just so beautiful and magical. Um, I love how they curated this color story. Like the neutral row in the middle there is just one that I find really appealing because it's not, it's definitely on the cooler side. And then the couple of pops of matte, uh, sorry, of pastels are really pretty. Um, I really love the looks I've created so far with this and I can't wait to play with it some more. Um, and I definitely want to try more from the brand. So holding on to that. And then we have, this is the Patrick Ta. I hate the packaging in the sense of like how shiny it is and it's just like so covered in smudges and fingerprints. This is the Major Dimension 2. I think this is technically called the, I thought this was specifically called some sort of like rose or something anyways palette, but I don't see it on, on here. Um, but this is the inside of that. Um, it's not one I reach for a ton, but it performs so beautifully. Every time I create a look with this, I get so many compliments. It's one that I use more so in like my um, everyday, like day-to-day -day life. If I want to like go out for like a dinner and just want a really pretty glam, easy look, then I reach for this. It's so beautiful. Um, I absolutely love it. And like this shade in here, um, what one is that called? I don't... I'm not 100% sure what shade this one is because from the back, I don't know what one's what, um, but it is really beautiful. It's got some dimension to it, like a little bit of shiftiness, um, absolutely gorgeous along with the shade as well. So keeping that, um, I love the formula so much that I'm tempted to like get um, one of the other ones, like the first one, but at the same time, I don't use color stories like this a ton in my collection. So I've been resisting. Next, we have uh, the Ensley Rain Cosmetics Harvest Moon Palette. Um, again, it was a brand I had been dying to try for so long, but they just, they, they, they expensive. Um, well worth it, in my opinion. Like, there's a reason that they cost a lot of money. They're definitely um, an amazing formula. Like, just look at that. Look how beautiful that is. And just look how many absolutely beautiful, shimmery, shifty, gorgeous shades that you get. It is just stunning. So you're you're paying a premium for this amazing formula. And they're mattes. Like, although like I could almost use like maybe a couple of like lighter shades in here, um, these are absolutely wonderful. I think one of the magical things about these, especially because to me it's like the shimmers are like where it's at, like that's what it's all about. I think a beautiful way to use these mattes is to just like blend one out um, into your crease, not try to get like too intricate, like with like layering or, or you know, with the mattes. Like, not that you can't, but just I don't think it's really about that. And then just slapping one of these gorgeous shimmers across your lid would create the most easy to do but 
absolutely stunning look. Um, I loved this. I played with it a few times and I can't wait to play with it some more. I really want the one that's gonna about to come out, um, the Cold Moon, and I even want to go back and get like their other ones from this like Moon series. Uh, but oh my gosh, absolutely love this. Only palette I have from them and I need more. Adore this, staying in my collection. Um, next we have the only one that I have from Lois Cosmetics and this is the Meet Me in the Underworld. I don't really know what's happening with this brand. I know that they did the like, is it called like Meet Me at Midnight or something Midnight palette. Um, I never ended up getting that one possibly because like I really like I do like this color story. I think it's a lot of fun. But every time I go to use it or look at it, I'm always just kind of like, meh. And I don't know if it's just because it's like the shimmers aren't really, like, they're nice. They're okay. But, like, they're nothing super special. Um, so I think a lot of times I end up being, like, deciding to go with something else just because I don't want to have to, like, pull another shimmer in. Um, I want to be able to utilize this as a one and done. Uh, but, like, I don't know. It's beautiful. But I'm just... I'm unsure. And then like part of me, like one of my biggest reasons for wanting this palette is the packaging because I just thought it was just so beautiful and romantic um, and just oh, moody. I just love it. Um, so I don't know. I'm going to put this in my maybe pile because I'm not sure whether or not I should hold on to this really just for packaging sake. I'm trying to avoid that kind of mindset. Then we have the two I have from Wicked Widow Beauty. Um, again, it was a brand I really wanted to try for a while. And then when they um, released this Graveyard Smash palette, so it was like their like Halloween release, I just knew I finally had to do it. Um, it is just such a fun curated color story. It's like grungy and moody. But just so beautiful. I love the shades that they went with. Um, everything just performs so amazingly. So that is going nowhere. Next we have the Resurrection palette, which is their latest release. And oh my god. Look at that. Oh. This like, I'm already telling you, like I'm not doing a ranking, like at least not this year. Maybe next year I'll try to do one. Um, you got you guys are lucky you're getting a declutter. Uh, but um this if I were to do a ranking, I think that this would probably end up being my number one palette for the year. I absolutely adore this. Every time I look at it, I am just gasping from the beauty of it. <laughs> that might be dramatic, but I don't care. It deserves it. This is such a gorgeous color story. I think a lot of like the photos and videos I've seen are, have been so beautiful and those don't even do it justice. It is so much more beautiful even in person. Um, I just, this is such a well curated color story and this is just absolutely magical. I have nothing but amazing things to say about it. So that is going nowhere. Next we have the only palette I've have or like shadows at all that I've tried from Cleano Cosmetics. Um, they are Canadian based and even Ontario woo -woo, uh, based uh, indie brand. Um, so I really would like to try more from them and be able to support local. Um, but uh, so far, this is the only one I've done. So this is the palette, uh, the dragon fruit palette that they did in collab with Emily Violet Marie. Um, I've never, like, I've, I've heard amazing things about her. I've never actually, like, watched any of her stuff before. And before this, um, I'm sorry to say I hadn't heard of her before. Uh, but this is the palette. It is all shimmers. Um, not like, you know, like, to the, like, they have, I know that they have, like, these stained glass ones that are, I hear the most amazing things about and one day I really need to try. Um, I don't think these are quite like up there with those, but this is still really beautiful. Um, absolutely gorgeous. Um, I love the formula and although I probably don't use it as often as I would like to because it is an all shimmer palette, um, I just, I don't know. I, I can't get rid of it. I think it's stunning. So that is staying. Next, we have the Too Faced Born This Way Sunset Stripped Palette. So sit there. This was the second one that they did for the Born This Way palette. And I actually used to own both. And then I was doing uh, my sister-in-law's makeup um, for a wedding she was going to. And I used the Born This Way palette. And she just was talking about how she really liked it. And I was like, I never really use it. So I gave it to her. Um, so I decluttered that one. Um, I really like... I don't know. 
I do like this a lot, but like I never, ever, ever use this. Like it is very neutral. And if I'm going to like reach for a neutral palette, I'm going to reach for like that Patrick Ta one um, or just other ones I'm sure I've already mentioned. Um, so I'm going to put this in my maybe pile, but I'm pretty sure I'm probably going to declutter that. And then the last one in this pile, this is the Sydney Grace and Mel Thompson Tiny Marvels palette. Um, I'm sure like anyone who watches any beauty stuff uh, has to know who Mel Thompson is and that unfortunately she's no longer with us, which is the world is a sadder, like a sad place without her because she was such a beautiful soul. Um, and this is the palette she did with Sydney Grace. Um, it's definitely very tame for a color story for me. It's not something that I gravitate towards a lot, but it is a beautiful formula. And also just for like nostalgic reasons, like, you know, I didn't know Mel Thompson personally. Um, you know, I was not someone who was lucky enough to say that she was like a close friend or anything like that. But for me being someone like when, when she was still, you know, around, um, and after this palette had come out, I had posted a look doing this palette, uh, using this palette and she like liked it commented and like reposted it on her own feed and it just for someone who is with such a big name um and with such a following to take the time to even notice such a small creator such as myself like that always meant the world to me and you know is one of the reasons why um she anything to do with her holds such a dear place in my heart so this is never ever ever going anywhere I cherish this and absolutely love it Next, we have my ColourPop palettes. Let's go through these. First, we have the Tinkerbell uh, Sprinkle A Little Magic palette. Um, this is not one I got when it originally released, but just the more and more I looked at it um, when it was on sale, like available for a sale at one point, I snagged it up. I think it's a lot of fun. I really do like this color story. And as of right now, I'm not ready to let it go. So holding on to that. Next, we have the Baroque palette. I um, just really <laughs> loved the theming for this. And I really loved how, like, cool tone this was. I don't know. Like, the more I look at it, like, I never, ever reach for this palette. It is beautiful. But if I want cool tones, like, I've got, like, that um, Interstellar Stacey Marie palette. And I've got cool tones in other palettes as well. So I think it's time to probably let this go. Next, we have the Blowing Smoke. Um, I know that this originally had a different name to it, but I cannot remember what it was. Uh, but this is like their black and grays. Again, like I kind of held on to this with the idea of it being like, oh, that'd be such a perfect like go-to for a smoky eye. But I can get those tones from other palettes that also have other shades in them that I like. So I don't feel like I need a palette specifically for that. So I'm gonna pass that along. And then let's grab all these up together. I've got my um, Star Wars palettes that I have from the brand. So first we have the Mandalorian the Child one. Really love this. Um, although I don't really reach for this a lot, I absolutely adore Star Wars and I am not ready to let go of it for that reason. <laughs> um, then we have the Darth Vader, who Darth Vader is my all-time favorite character from Star Wars so I knew I had to have this and I really like this color story a lot actually I find this to be really interesting um and dynamic and I just I really like this I haven't used it a ton but again I think it's just a lot of my color pop palettes have sort of gotten lost in my collection uh so I'm gonna hold on to this but I am actually really still in love with that color story and then we have this one which what was it officially called just like the Star Wars palette um love this like Oh my gosh, can we give a moment for like the artwork, uh, which like, I guess like they didn't create this artwork that already exists uh, for Star Wars, but just how they utilized it. I love that that's how they styled this. I think it's a really fun, interesting color story. Um, like not like the most interesting out there. And I'm sure I'm probably like at least 50% of me is holding on to this just for like the nostalgic and like theming of it but I love this and I'm not ready to let it go yet. I have the first uh color pop in Sailor Moon um collab palette this is the pretty guardian palette so much fun uh this is really pretty um it's very like soft subtle color story probably not something I'd be like I'd gravitate towards 
and I'm probably mostly holding on to this solely because of the theme because I absolutely love Sailor Moon uh, but I am gonna hold on to this it's staying in my collection then we have the Lush Life palette which when this came out I was just super blown away by how vibrant and beautiful this color story is and I still think it's really pretty but it's just not something I reach for but part of me is also like Oh, like, do I want to hold on to it so I have these sorts of shades in the ColourPop formula if I want to do a ColourPop look? I'm going to put this in my maybe pile. I'm not sure. And then we have the It's a Mood, which is the only, like, larger pan, like, larger size palette that I own from them. Really pretty. Um, it is quite neutral. Part of me is, like, wondering if I would reach for this much at all because it is pretty like pretty neutral i'm gonna put my maybe pile and then we have the two hocus pocus palettes this one's still in the packaging let's take that out um i never got the middle one so this is like the first and third one um the middle one even though i love hocus pocus it just like i was just so unimpressed with that color story and even like the artwork in that that i just was like no nope, skip uh but this is the first one that they did which was the gather round sisters and it is just really nice and like moody i just really love the tones that they went with with this so i am definitely holding on to that okay, and then this is from the hocus pocus 2 this is the all hallows eve um really more cartoony with the packaging which i'm sort of like you know hit and miss on um it is cute but it's also wouldn't be my go-to but it is it is cute um but the color story this is just so lovely and magical to me this is just so like I love the first one. Um, I love the tones in that, but I will understand where people were coming from, where it maybe didn't seem as like hocus pocus, like, you know, color story. This definitely nails it. So I think the combination of like the two, like let's even just hold them up together. I think you really kind of get everything from it. Like I feel like from the first one, you get these like beautiful, moody, more kind of like typical, like witchy sort of moody vibe and then you have the bright more like halloween -y, um sort of you know more specifically the sanderson sister shades uh with this one and this shade here uh candle uh candle is a light is just so magical i love it so never going anywhere i absolutely love these palettes okay so probably one of my biggest like brand collections it is the Beauty Bay, or do you say by Beauty Bay? Anyways, the, the Beauty Bay brand. Um, I fell in love with this um, formula when they did their uh, Book of Magic, which actually, well, actually, I don't know, maybe it was the Sunrise palette first. But anyways, I fell in love with the brand, absolutely adore the formula. Um, I've kind of slowed down on purchasing from them. I just feel like I have so many of the palettes that I just... I don't really feel like there's anything new that they've been doing that really adds to my collection. So um, I haven't bought like their last few. Um, not not sure if we're going to part with any of these. I do have a lot of them, uh, but I really, again, I love the formula. So I like having a lot of shades in that. So let's move these a bit more out of the way. So we have some space I'm trying to cover up my very white and probably very dirty uh, desk. <laughs> Anyways, let's start actually first with these mini ones. So these were, they're not all of them. They have some other ones. I think this was like the first round and then they did another round um, of like a collaboration with Disney. And uh, I didn't get them at first. Um, didn't think that they were palettes I was really super interested in um and it just eventually one day when they were on a really good sale and I think I was ordering something else I decided to grab the three pack so first we have it's the jungle book one so these are all just like six pan palettes I'm trying to remember I guess I'll I'll be able to tell once I get in there I think all of them are all matte too um but this is super cute. Um, I haven't really like used this one at all yet and I've had it for a little while now, but I really do find the color story interesting. So I'm gonna hold on to that for now. I'm not ready to say goodbye to it yet. 
And then we have the Cheshire Cat one. Uh, well, I guess it's Alice in Wonderland, sorry. Um, the, it's not called Cheshire Cat. Uh, but uh, this one here, also really fun, funky color story. Um, actually, one of my first, it might even be my very first video that I ever posted on my channel was a tutorial doing this look. Um, I really enjoyed this, um, so I'm going to hold on to that one too. The Dumbo one, though, I have yet to use this one as well. I don't know. I keep going back and forth about decluttering this one. Um, it's just, I don't think it's one that I will reach for. Uh, it's just a little too primary with like the, you know, blue, yellow, and red there. And then like those are pretty colors, uh, but they're nothing so amazing that it makes me really want to play with this. So I, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna declutter it. I just, I know I'm not really gonna use it. Then we have their pastels palette. That's what it looks like. Really cute. Um, I do think I've got like pastels in that in enough other palettes. Um, and I also just, when it comes to the formula, I don't think they had like really quite like perfected it yet when they made this. Um, it's a nice enough palette, but I just, I literally never reach for this and pastels aren't really something that I would use generally on their own. I normally utilize pastels to, um, like blend out shades. So I don't really foresee myself using this. So we are going to pass that along as well. Ooh, then we have the Nikki tutorials. What was this one? Is this called anything specific? I don't see uh, name. Um, but again, the Nikki tutorials palette with Beauty Bay. I remember this was just so like everyone went nuts over this palette when it came out. Um, I really enjoyed mine. I know that there was some like mixed reviews, um, on how, uh, I don't know if it'll try to cover up the mirror so I'm not blinding everyone. Uh, there was some mixed reviews on, uh, particularly I think some of the matte shades and how they performed. Um, when it comes to like the Beauty Bay formula, I don't think this is as good as their other palettes. Um, I definitely think their other palettes are a lot more amazing. Um, I just, oh, I absolutely love this pride shade here. It is so stunning. I don't know. I'm back and forth about this. I'm having a hard time with the idea of letting it go, just especially... Like, like I said before, I don't always hold on to palettes that are like no longer available because it's not something that, um, like I won't specifically get rid of them for that, but because you can't like get it again, um, I don't feature them a lot on my channel just because I don't want people seeing something and wanting it and then not being able to get it. But, you know, I also try to look at makeup as in like, you know, you don't need to have like the exact same thing. Like you can be inspired by the color story, like watching people's videos, you know, like great, I guess, like if it inspires you to like maybe try something or you were super curious about something and after watching someone play with it, it kind of tells you whether you do or don't want it. Um, but I think mostly it's nice just to get some inspiration. So anyways, that was a big sidetrack. Uh, but I don't know, like, I know you can't get any more and if I get rid of it and then I regret it, I can't get it back. Uh, I'm going to put it in the maybe pile for now. All right, let's go through, let's go through my big ones. Uh, first off, oh, somehow I got like a little pearl thing attached to that. All right, so... First off, out of like the big 42 color palettes, we have the Midnight palette. This is it. This is absolutely stunning. I just, I look at a color store like this and I'm just like, oh, I love it. Um, I love these kinds of purple tones and like it's just got a nice mesh of the blues in it too. Um, I just love with the mixture of the two. It's not like exactly monochromatic because it's got blues and purples. Uh, but it's also because it's variations within both colors, it's not overwhelming with a bunch of different shades either. Uh, I really love this. Um, I'm definitely keeping that. Then we have the Earthy palette, which came out 
at the same time. Um, they've since made like a berries size in this one because for some reason like when they did the original they only released the berries like um, I'll you'll see it because I have it uh, in like I think it's like a 16 pan palette um, for whatever reason and they've now since released a berries in this size but because I have a 16 pan and I just know that it would probably be relatively repetitive I'm sure there's different shades but I think I have them in my other palettes so I don't need it Anyways, long story short, I don't have the berries in the 42 uh, color size, um, and I probably will never unless, like, I come across on a really, 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 really good sale, uh, which Beauty Bay does have from time to time, uh, then I, I don't think I'll ever get that, but earthy palette. <laughs> That's what's in front of us now. We have this. Um, it definitely does have, like, a lot of, like, warm tones in it. Let's try to see I feel like I was like I didn't think I'd even consider getting rid of this but I want to pull out my I haven't gotten to it yet but let's pull out hello my fold the mirror down get those out of the way uh my wilderness palette which this came out like long before the earthy and let's look at these side by side. I really do love them, but part of me is like, do we need both? Like, yes, this one has like this blue and this one goes a bit red, but do I need both? I never even make that decision right now, so <laughs> I am going to keep both those. Wow, I have a shade that's obviously crumbling in this. Uh, we're going to keep both of these for now because I just, again, love the formula. Um, even though I don't play with my Beauty Bay ones as much lately, um, I used to play with them a ton. But there's just, again, been some other palettes um, that have come out and some like new brands that I've tried that I've really wanted to focus on. Uh, but I still really love them and I like having them in my collection. So I'm going to hold on to them. Then we have the Bright Matte Palette. Um, I've used this white a ton for like Halloween looks. Um, part of me is like, oh, I've got like other rainbow palettes now that I could get probably get rid of this, but I really like the formula and I actually really like the idea of having this palette available specifically for when I do Halloween looks, um, just cause it's got a really good selection of shades and it's all mattes. So I'm gonna hold on to this. And we have the Fiery. Oh, it is beautiful. But do I ever, ever reach for it? Oh, I'm going to put that in my maybe pile. I didn't think I'd be considering getting rid of really any of my Beauty Bay ones, but just looking at some of them, I'm like, oh, maybe I don't really need that color story. All right, and then this is um, the Beauty Bay with uh, Jade. I don't know. I don't actually know who Jade is, uh, but <laughs> I really liked this color story um, compared to the other ones we've seen. This is a lot more chaotic, I guess you could say, uh, but it is really, really beautiful. Um, how many times am I going to say beautiful when it comes to a lot of these palettes? Uh, it's a lot of fun. It's really nice. Uh, but part of me is also kind of like, it's so chaotic that I almost don't even know if I would reach for this ever. And it's like, there's no specific shade in here. Like I guess other than like Milky Way, but like there's no specific shade. Oh, there's also this one though that I really like. Oh, that's a really beautiful shimmer. I'm going to try not to do too much swatching in this video because it'll just extend an already, I'm sure, really long video. I'm unsure about this one, so we're going to put that in the maybe pile as well. My maybe pile is getting kind of ridiculous. Uh, then we have the neutral palette, which this was like a much later buy for me. Um, it's one that I haven't dipped into a ton, but I just absolutely love the tones in this and I just love having 
this color story handy for when I want to do something really glam. I know I've held on to some other palettes for that reason as well, and I don't do like neutrally glam looks too often, but I really love this. I'm not ready to say goodbye to it yet. Let's move on to some of these like 16, 20 pan ones. So we have the Book of Magic, which this is quite old and hasn't been available for quite a while yet, but I still absolutely adore this. It's not going anywhere. Then we have the Tropical Palette. Um, this is almost kind of a reason why I was able to get rid of like that BH Cosmetics Mimosa one. Um, it's just, I get all like my kind of like peaches and corals and pinks, whatever, but it's uh, got a lot more uh, vibrancy to it. I just like the formula even better. Um, and it's just really nice. So I'm going to keep that one. Then we have the Berries. I really love this for a good pink moment keeping that then we have the love notes which I also hesitated getting this at first because I thought maybe it was just a little too light for me but I think this is really beautiful um I don't know if it actually is similar to it but the color story looking at it almost reminds me a little bit of the Anastasia Beverly Hills oh, what's the palette called it's like their light purple outside one um, I don't remember. We'll eventually get to it. <laughs> it kind of reminds me of that, but I think I actually like this one better. And then we have the new Romantic, which is just similar to the berries, but a little bit deeper of some tones. And you've got those like golds in there and stuff. It's really nice. I really like it. Keeping that. And we have the new Mood, which... I think this one, I, I think I'm gonna say goodbye to. I got it just, I think like on an impulse and I never use it. And I just, I don't really look at this color story and find it inspiring whatsoever. So I think I'm just gonna pass that one along. Then we have the Sunset Horizons, which I think is like the first of these palettes that they ever did. I think this one came out before Book of Magic. I'm pretty sure. Uh, but it is really beautiful. But I actually almost think it's time for me to say goodbye to this too. I just, I don't know. I, with the color stories they've come out since, I just really don't find myself gravitating towards this. And even just looking at it now, I'm just kind of like, meh. So that's probably a sign it's time to get rid of it. Uh, then we have, this is the Age of Opulence. Um, it's similar to the Book of Magic. Here, I'll grab that one back out so we can do a side-by-side. -side. I think they are different enough, though, although that's not much of an argument looking at them side-by-side -side there. Um, but I I think they're different enough. There's some tones that you get in this one that I don't feel like we have in this, so my collection. I can keep what I want. I'm going to keep that for now. And then we have the Dark Fantasy, which is this one. I'm not like as blown away by this color story, but I do, I do like it. I do think it's fun. Um, I like that it's just like dark and moody, um, especially compared to just how like light and colorful a lot of their other palettes are. So I think it definitely adds something to my collection of like Booty Bay palettes. So that that is what we are holding on to for that and then we'll come back to those ones that we add to the maybe pile okay next we've got my blend bunny cosmetics palettes um tell you right now i'm not getting rid of any of these uh this is a brand i've really fallen in love with i definitely can say that the hype is real when it comes to um, their formula um, and everything. Uh, I don't have more of the palettes. Um, well, one, money. <laughs> and then also, um, I just am not like in love with every single color story they've done. Um, I don't have it in here. Like one other thing I own from them as well is the Noctulucent uh, highlight palette, which I do use um, like to enhance eye looks a lot as well. So I guess you could kind of uh, add it into that, but technically it's highlight palette. So I don't have it in here, um, but I really love the palettes that I have grabbed from them. I need to focus back again on these a bit more, like I used them when I got them, and then um, just other stuff 
uh, came into the spotlight as well. So I haven't really had a chance to play with them again, uh, but hopefully, like I've said a million times, I will play with some stuff more now that the collection's gonna get dwindled down a bit. Uh, so here is the Lure palette. Um, this is, as you can tell, like a very like mermaid sort of theme palette. Here it is. This shade Pearl up in the corner here is the most magical shade ever. I'm so happy that they included this even though, um, because it is like a duochrome and they did along with this release, they did, I'm trying to remember what it's called. I think treasure or something. Anyways, it was a quad of four multi-chromes and they are absolutely stunning, but I just, I knew I probably wouldn't use them enough and I had enough other multi-chromes in my collection that I just couldn't justify the expense for them. So I skipped on the quad, but I am so in love with this palette and I love that Pearl's included here. Like as colorful as the rest of his, this is actually almost like one of my favorite rows. I did a really um, nice glam look with this. Uh, again, you can find it on my uh, Instagram and that. Um, I really loved how it came out. I have to play with this more. Um, I'm hit and miss with the whole gradient thing. Like, I kind of like the way that, and you'll see when um, they get to like the sugar and grunge, I like how like that one is where there is some gradient, but then like the shimmers were moved. So I feel like it mixes it up a bit. Um, I find sometimes when there's too much of just like a like monochromatic gradient going on sometimes that can just throw me off creatively just as much as it can if it's like super chaotic so I need me personally I need a balance between the two I don't want gradients but I also don't want it to be um absolutely chaotic all over the place because then my brain is just like reeling uh so I still like it when like colors are somewhat grouped together but also like spread out so thanks Hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> Anyways, I still find this really beautiful. Um, I love the formula. This is amazing. And like I said, it's not going anywhere. Um, I'm so happy I finally got like the iconic blends palette. Um, I think that this is going to be such a staple in my collection. And having this palette is like what um, almost made me think about like whether or not I should get rid of that Beauty Bay um, Bright Mattes palette just because you know, I love this, but I kind of want to utilize this more for my eye looks and maybe hold on to that when I'm being more rough with Halloween looks, um, just because I'm not worried about panning that as much, whereas this I want to cherish a bit more. Um, so I absolutely love this. It's so beautiful. I love the undertones to this because it's like rainbowy, but it's not like your typical rainbow. Uh, so I just think this is amazing and a really great staple for any makeup lovers collection. And we have this Surge palette, which I I don't know. I, I didn't check today or anything. I don't know if this is still currently available on their uh, website, like the stock that they have. Uh, but this is a palette that has been discontinued. Um, I don't know like the exact reason um, from what I had heard. It was just simply the neon pigments, like the pigmentation uh, pigments, like the product needed uh, for making the pigment shades. Um, is something that I don't know if it's just simply not available anymore or if it's something where it just got too costly for them to make it. So they've just opted that they're not going to anymore because it just would probably drive up the cost of the palette too much. Uh, but it's more or less comes down to just the inability to make the palette anymore for whatever reason. Uh, but this is really beautiful. I don't mind the gradient in this way. Um, maybe it's just like with the neons there it's just such like there's just such a drastic difference with like the tones in each row like or column whatever that um the gradient doesn't really throw me off in this i really do need to play with this more um i'm fascinated by the neons in here but neons also terrify me because i just i i'm still learning how to work with them i don't really know how to use neon pigments that well and whenever I've tried in the past, I've just always been kind of like meh about the look. And that's totally like user error. It's me. I'm still learning how to use them. Uh, but I look forward to playing with this more and creating some stuff. Um, you know, hopefully it'll inspire people who already have the palette uh, and want to figure out looks for it um, or for you to shop your own stash. But I love this. It's definitely not going anywhere, especially now that it's been discontinued because I won't be able to get it again. And then lastly, we have the Sugar and Grunge. So this is the newest 
in my collection that I have. Um, I think she's come out with two, no, now three with the Makina palette, um, three palettes uh, since this that I have not picked up that I've opted to not get for the time being. Um, but I'm sure eventually, um, I don't doubt, probably especially with the Makina one, that I'd probably get that. Um, I think I mostly skipped on the, what's it called again now? Sickly Sweet palette, um, just because it just, I the color story just wasn't speaking to me a lot. So anyways, I don't have it in my collection, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, but here we go. Here is the um, Sugar and Grunge. I absolutely love this palette. I think it is really beautiful. This is what, um, one thing I meant to, like where um, I was just talking about how like there's the gradient, but then they, um, when she changed where the shimmers were in this, I thought that was a really smart choice because I feel like it just, it adds a different like sort of dimension to the palette. Um, I feel like you don't just get so stuck on just, oh, it's like, there's that row. Um, let me just play within that. Like all of a sudden I look at this and I'm like, yeah, like there's, I could go like monochromatic with the uh, mattes, but then, ooh, I could use this different sort of shimmer in there. And like this shimmer would look really great with like, I feel like she still placed it where there's mattes that are very complementary to the column of shades that they're with but it's different. So you can still grab like the monochromatic, like matching sort of shimmer, but you could also go with what's at the bottom and create something really interesting with that. So to me, like this is like my favorite layout that she's done. I really love this. Um, I know a lot of people gave her a hard time about this, which I think sucks because I say like, you know, good for her for trying different things and like really trying to figure out like what works for her brand and not just getting like stuck in like one idea of something. Um, and like, she's trying to like, listen to like what everybody wants, but also like do what she wants and stuff. Cause like, you know, it's her brand, like that's her baby. She should get to explore it. Uh, so I, I really love this again. Um, it's just my kind of layout. I really like this. I need to play with this again. I knew I had one more. Somehow I almost missed the Dollhouse palette. Uh, this is, I think before some of their other ones came out, this was sort of like the neutral palette to the brand. Um, mine came like uh, damaged. Like this shade was basically um, like completely shattered and gone. This one has since broken quite a bit and has gone down. Um, this is just for me digging into it, <laughs> but, uh, this is really beautiful. I love sort of just how, like, it almost kind of reminds me of like some sort of, uh, like Victorian kind of romantic kind of color story. I really like this a lot of fun. Um, uh, and also when it comes to, comes to like these shades too, I just like to note the Flam Bunny Cosmetics customer service is absolutely amazing. Um, I really like to shout out when customer service um, is really good uh, because like just when I kind of reached out about this, she was right on it. And like, she was like, it got resolved right away. She was so kind, so sweet, like no hesitation about just helping, you know, make it right for me, even though it's like, it's not like their fault, like they pack it great. Um, and they just, once it leaves their hands, they don't really have any control over it. So for her to still be like, I'm going to make it right for you, um, is really great. Um, I really appreciate that. Uh, but I really love this palette, not getting rid of it. Um, you know, I might not be the color story out of all of them that I reach for as much, but I love it and I'm hanging on to it. Okay, next we have my Anastasia Beverly Hills slash like the Norvina ones, but to me it's like these are still ABH. It's in the ABH section at Sephora and um, on their website, so I'm including it all together. Uh, start off with, um, we have, this was one of the mini Norvina collection palettes that they did. This is the volume three. I absolutely loved how it had like the little cherries on it. Um, and it is like a really cute palette and color story. Um, I just, I don't know. I just never reach for it. I do think that this pressed glitter is really beautiful and I absolutely love it. And I'd be tempted to keep it just for that. Uh, but I'm trying to not keep palettes, full palettes for one shade. Um, especially like even if it's pretty, it's not so amazing that I can't just find happiness with something else. Uh, so I am going to pass that along. 
Uh, let's just do the rest of the Norvina ones. Uh, so this is the Norvina Pro Pigment Volume 1. Um, I don't think I got any of these full price just because I couldn't justify spending um, the $80 Canadian on, I think it was like around $80 Canadian on these. Uh, it might have been like 70 or 75 but still a good, a good chunk of money. Um, I couldn't justify it on these um, so I nabbed them when they peaked up at uh, winners, except for like the last one. I did get it on sale, but um, I got it on sale at Sephora. So anyways, <laughs> this is the volume one. That's what it looks like. Kind of has a bit of a chemical smell to it. So I don't, I don't know if that means anything. Um, I don't know. I'm kind of back and forth about this because it is really beautiful. When I look at it, I'm just like, oh, so pretty. But like, I never, ever, ever, ever reach for it. And I just, even if it means that I'm getting rid of a bunch of palettes um, and like my collection becomes so much smaller, I would still rather have everything in my collection be stuff that I'm going to actually play with and use. Uh, so, ooh, I'm going to, I'm going to put this in my major pile. I know, I know. Sometimes in the heat of the moment, I just can't decide and I don't want to hum and haw on screen. So I feel like I need to like set it aside and like maybe I'll swatch a couple of the colors and just think about it. Uh, so I never got the volume two. It was just very blue. And as I've said, blue is not a huge um, draw for me. So I don't, uh, <laughs> don't own it for that reason. Uh, so this is the volume three and it's just very like warm, um, almost kind of reminds me of like the Melt Vita palette, like that color story without like the browns. Um, but, uh, but like on steroids cause there's so many more shades. Um, you know what, this one I am going to say goodbye to cause I never use it and I just, they're not shades I'm drawn to. And I think I just picked that one up cause it was on sale. So there's no point in holding on to it for that. Uh, this is why also I'm trying to be careful about like shopping at winners or anything because um, I've gotten better about it but I just have a tendency where it's like I didn't want the palette when it was full price and it wasn't even just because it was expensive but then now I see it on sale like that's how I ended up with so many of my Morphe palettes. I was just like oh it's on sale so it's like cheaper so now it's more worth it so why not um, but and then I it sits in my collection I never use it. Anyways, this is the Pro Pigment Volume 5. I still am kind of intrigued by the Volume 4, but I don't use these very much, so I probably shouldn't ever get it. Um, I've only really played with this once or twice. Um, I like it. You know what? I really like this one. I feel like this is, like, because it's, like, purple, too. Like, obviously, it's got, like, the pinks and that in it, too, but I think what draws me mostly to this is the purple shades, um, and then even, like, the peachy tones, but I feel like I have those in here as well, so I'm actually going to say goodbye. Ooh, oh, my gosh. I'm going to throw it, apparently. I'm going to say goodbye. Let's make sure I didn't break anything. Uh, goodbye to the volume one, and I'm going to hold on to volume four because I just, it's newer to my collection, and I'm not ready to say goodbye to that yet. Then we have the uh, Anastasia Beverly Hills and Jackie Ina palette. Um, I'm not good at, like, I used to watch Jackie Ina more, um, and then, I don't know, for, only, for one reason or another, like, no real specific reason, I just haven't watched any of her stuff in forever. Um, and then, uh, but I just really loved this color story. I loved that she really created something different with Anastasia Beverly Hills than what some of the other palettes that we've been seeing come out. Like, I just thought it was really innovative, um, and I loved the color story a lot. I don't, I never reach for it, though. And it's a collab. I also, like, it's one of those things, too, where it's like, gosh, this is a horrible thing about, like, collabs and stuff, but um, there's just been so many times, like, where it's like you'll get someone's brand or, like, someone's collab, and then stuff becomes like problematic and like you just don't want to be supporting anything that's like not you know sharing like your views or whatever um and I don't know like for some reason I thought I had heard maybe like that there was some drama with Jackie Ina but maybe I'm just remembering something wrong or whatever but um I'm gonna hold on to this for now I'm not ready to let go of it I'm, oh look at that packaging god I could stare at that 
all day. Uh, I'm not ready to let go of it yet, um, so I'm gonna hold on to that for now. Uh, oh yeah, it was the actual like Norvina palette. Is, I hate this packaging. It's kind of almost like velvet and I hate the feel of velvet. For me, it's like nails going down a chalkboard. I hate this. <laughs> so um, I'm, I'm actually just going to say goodbye to this. I feel like between um, that Love Notes palette that I kept from Beauty Bay and then this um, Volume 4 Norvina palette, I feel like I've got the purple shade. So I'm going to say goodbye to that one. Then we have, this is the Prism palette, which this was really interesting. Um, I loved the shade Sphere and shade Dimension, but do I ever, ever use this? No. I'm going to put it in my maybe section. Then we have the Riviera, which again, this was one where I picked it up on sale at Sephora, not Sephora, at Winners, um, and it was like an impulse buy. I was just excited because I was like, oh my gosh, an ABH palette, uh, and I never use it. I just, I'm not inspired to. It's just kind of, the color shades are meh, and it's not like the formula is so amazing that it's worth having it in this formula, so I'm going to say goodbye to that. I didn't think I was ever going to let go of any of my ABH palettes, but sometimes it's just time. Uh, then we have the Sultry. Oh, this is just really beautiful, cool tone. But then I... Ooh, maybe. Then we have the Carly Bible. I feel like I'm just like, I don't know if I'll ever be ready to get rid of this, even though it's not one I ever really reach for. But I just, there's something about this color story that I really, really like. Um, and I just loved the aesthetic of this. So I'm going to hold on to that for now. And then the Modern Renaissance, which part of me never wants to get rid of this because it was one of my first, like, high-end, like, esque palettes that I ever bought. Like, you know, and I didn't, like, rebuy it. Like, this is the original. But I just, I never used this. And it is so old. I don't even know if this, like, should be used on the eyes anymore. So I'm going to get rid of this. And I'm not even going to, like, give it away. I'm going to, like, probably bin that because I think she is old. All right, I think that's all the ABH ones. I knew this was gonna happen a few times, but I missed one. This is the Anastasia, like when they started like redoing, um, like making more of their palettes, um, I kept being interested in them. And there's actually one that, has it come out after this? I can't remember the name of it. Sort of like a, reminds me of like a almost like revamped, come back to life, modern renaissance sort of thing. Like it's sort of like a, deep romantic kind of a vibe. Anyways, I don't have it. <laughs> I'm interested in it, but um, the Cosmos palette. This is the newest one that I have, and I just think it's beautiful. Like, is it absolutely, like, mind-blowing? No, especially when, like, once you delve into indie eyeshadows, there's just not really a whole lot that in like mainstream that can be very impressive. Uh, but I still really love this. To me, um, just having had a lot, as you just saw, of Anastasia Beverly Hills palettes, um, I'm able to appreciate this as being something where this is them really stepping, um, stepping up their game, stepping outside their comfort zone and trying to keep up with the times um, and like what's hot right now um, the best they can. Cause like these are still like a mainstream brand. So it's like the people who generally buy um, a lot of Anastasia Beverly Hills, um, like your everyday kind of consumer are not the same people who are buying a lot of these indie brands. Um, so I think they still need to make it appealing for them too. So I really appreciate this. I love this and it's definitely staying in my collection. So next we have Dominique Cosmetics. Are they even like still like making anything? I don't know. I haven't really kind of been on my radar in quite a while. Um, one of the first things that ever got me interested in the brand was this lemonade palette. I hummed and hawed about this palette for so long, kept going back and forth as to being like, do I need it? Uh, I don't know. Um, and although it's not something I've used a lot, I just, I covet it for so long that I just am not ready to get rid of that. So I'm going to hold on to that. The Celestial Thunder, I think this was like a specialty one that they had. Like, I think there might be a more full-size one that was available 
outside of um, BoxyCharm, but I believe this was like made specifically for BoxyCharm. This definitely came in one of my boxes. Um, it is pretty, but the formula is nothing special. I just, I, I never reach for it. And I think even if my collection was smaller, I still don't think I'd reach for it. So we're gonna say goodbye to that one. Then we have the Rustic Glam. Um, really beautiful. I do think that this is a nice color story. Um, you know, it is a bit interesting, but again, I just wasn't wowed by the formula. Um, and I just don't see myself really reaching for this. It's not a color story I find very inspiring. So I'm going to say goodbye to that. And then we have the berries and cream, which this one ended up being like my most used. I really do love this color story. Um, like, you know, it was really great for what it you know, for the time um, and the point I was at my collect with my collection when I got this. Since then, I've just gotten a lot of other, um, tried a lot of other brands, gotten a lot of other palettes that have just blown me away that I just, I won't be reaching back into this. So it's just time to pass it along. Have the Shroud Cosmetics and it says Butte Bean, but she's since changed her name to Batty Bean, um, also just known as Jean um, on uh, YouTube um, and Instagram uh, and this was her first collab with Shroud Cosmetics and it's, it's freaking Bats palette and it is just so fun. I think this is such a funky color story. I still just love staring at this. Um, I will say that like a couple of the mattes um, like Dairy and Spooky are definitely not my favorite. Um, I don't know um, how kind of in love at least so far with this palette that I am with the Shroud Cosmetics matte formula. I do feel like I need to try more of their palettes to experiment more, but the shimmers are so wonderful. And like these other two mattes did perform nicely. So I don't know, maybe it was just those shades and like the kind of pigments that they are, but I just, I, I do love this even with not being um, absolutely over the moon with the performance of those mats. Um, I don't think I will ever get rid of this. And also I love Betty Jean. So I'm going to hold on to this in tribute to that. <laughs> uh, next we have the two palettes that I have from Bella Butte Bar. I think you say Bella Butte Bar, but anyways, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, this is the first palette I ever got from them, the Strange and Unusual palette. Um, this was their Halloween release last year. It is so gorgeous. They have since um, revamped their matte formula, um, and it's definitely, I can say so, because the other palette I have is newer. Um, it's a lot better. Like, not that it was terrible with this one, but it was just sort of like they were a lot more sheer, um, and just they weren't especially like standing up next to these shimmers. They just were not um, on the same level. But this color story is so beautiful. There are so many magical shades in here, like this shade Afterlife. Oh, God, I love it so much. Um, I love, I love all of them. Um, I adore this palette and also it's Beetlejuice theme. So I love it, especially for that. So never getting rid of that. <laughs> and then we have the Basic Witch palette, which this came out just slightly before their uh, recently de-influenced and I want that one so bad. Um, I think it's possibly available for pre-order um, and I've been tempted to grab it. Who knows when the timing is right, if it's still available to even order just with a pre-order, I might still get it. Um, but it's also one of those things too, where it's kind of like makeup is coming out so fast right now that it just feels like stuff becomes old news. And then you are kind of like, well, do I even make content about it? And if I can't make content, like should I spend money on it even if it is beautiful anyways I got the basic witch palette um when they showed the pictures of this I just knew I had to have this in my collection um I had wanted to try more from the brand especially since I heard that they had revamped the matte formula um and I am so happy to have gotten this um the shades are just so magical like I love this hocus pocus um perfectly wicked um resting witch face just they're all so amazing um and the mats are are really lovely in this so i'm super happy to have this in my collection and slowly but surely try to build up my collection from them i really am enjoying bella Butte bar um and they're just they seem like the brand owner just seems like such a lovely person uh and i am just so happy to show them love and support when i can next we have um, I think I just have the three, um, these palettes from Rude Cosmetics. These are all ones that I found at Winners. Um, 
I don't know of anywhere else where, at least here in Canada, where I could find like Rude Cosmetics, um, but they do appear at my local winners from time to time. Um, this is the City of Dreamy Lights palette. And it's definitely like a sort of like video game inspired palette. And it is just, yes, it's a pastel palette, but there's something about these shimmers that is just so stunning. I really love this. I just, I don't know if I'd ever be ready to let this go. It's just something that I think is just a really beautiful addition to my collection. And like even being a pastel palette, I actually kind of want to play with this even by itself. So that's saying something because I don't normally want to play with pa uh, pastels by themselves. But I think it's really gorgeous and I am keeping that one. These two, on the other hand, though, um, this is the Freshly Cut Flower Child palette, and it looks like this. Um, I don't know. I, I picked it up kind of like on a whim um, and just I have swatched it and I've just had like literally no desire to play with it and create a look. Um, so I'm just I'm going to let it go. I just think there's no point in me holding on to it. Um, you know, just because it was a good deal or whatever. Uh, and then this, I think, kind of goes hand in hand sort of with the um, that pastel palette, but this is the City of Neon Lights. Um, and it is a bigger palette, as you can see. And it really is pretty, um, but I just, I don't know, even though like this shade here, um, a beat to remember, like I probably shouldn't be, still sort of have that other swatch. Probably shouldn't be swatching it. Oh, that is like such a gorgeous shimmery chartreuse oh I'm gonna put this in my maybe pile but I don't know I have a feeling I'm probably just gonna let it go but maybe pile for now do we have my two palettes from Odin's Eye this is the Alva palette um pretty uh but just with what I have in my collection it's just between the color story and the formula it's just nothing that blows my mind so keeping it short and sweet I am going to pass that along um, and then we have the Soul Main palette. Um, I thought this was a really fun, interesting color story, like kind of almost like neutral with a twist. Um, this shimmer shade down here especially is just really nice. Uh, but it's just, there's nothing super magical or mind blowing about this. So I am going to pass this along too. Um, those were the only Odin's Eye palettes I have. Um, they've since these come out with tons of really gorgeous um, looking palettes um, and really um, intriguing color stories. Uh, just the timing has just never been right to pick one up. Um, so I'm hoping to eventually uh, try their newer formula um, and just newer uh, color stories they've been doing. But um, as of right now, I will not have any Odin's Eye in my collection. We have the Fenty Beauty Moroccan Spice. Um, I hate like how smudgy and fingerprinty this is, but I also just love the design of this packaging. Um, I think it's really neat. Let's, oh, I'm trying to see how I can open this. Um, here is the palette, um, just laid out differently, but also using the space nicely. Um, it's just definitely, <laughs> I think, uh, um, just laughing because I feel like I'm just saying some of the same things over and over again. Uh, it is very neutral leaning um, with just like, like a pop of blue, which people always joke about um, just like whenever like people do neutral palettes and they're like, oh, I add some color. There's a pop of blue. Um, it's pretty, but I have not reached for this in probably a couple of years. Um, used it probably when it immediately came out and then didn't touch it again. So I'm going to pass that along. Then we have, this is Honey Drip and Metallic Cat MUA, I think. It's the Edgy B palette. Uh, it's like this. Um, you know, it was neat trying this brand for the first time. Uh, this color story and formula did not blow me away. Um, I don't, I, I like pressed glitters. I don't really care for how these pressed gl glitters are. Um, they're just like really chunky. Um, and I just don't really love the way that they, um, apply. So I'm going to pass this along. Okay. Next we have my palettes from Violet Voss. Um, first we have the Sugar Crystals palette. 
Um, I just absolutely coveted this palette when it was first released. I just thought it was so beautiful. I still think it's really nice. Um, I hold on to it more so for like an accent palette. And I actually, um, I almost forgot I had it because uh, I have it over just like with my um, like pressed glitter palettes from Cara Beauty and that um, just to try to remember to use it with looks. Um, I just thought that these uh, lower really light shimmers in particular would be really beautiful to highlight um, uh, I look really nicely. Um, so I'm not, I'm not quite ready to say goodbye to this one yet. So I am going to hold on to that. Um, then we have the Coral Crush palette. Um, I ended up grabbing this. I don't even, I think I got this on sale at Sephora. Um, I grabbed this because I just loved the idea of like a more like corally, um, color story, but it is just, like, I don't know, none of the shades really pop out that much. Like the shade, um, the namesake Coral Crush is a beautiful shade, but it's just not something that I find, um, very inspiring and it's just not a palette ever reached for. So I'm fine with saying goodbye to that one. And then we have the, uh, the rainbow palette. I actually had this once before and I'm pretty sure decluttered it. And then I don't remember, I think, I got it in like a boxy charm, like the pop-up shop for whatever reason. It was just like really, really low price. And so I decided to grab it again and have since not touched it at all. Like it still has the plastic cover. Oh, hello. <laughs> uh, it still has the plastic cover. Um, I just, I haven't touched any of these. Like, although it is a pretty palette, it is all shimmers and it's just, it's not like the formula is so amazing that, um, that I just want to reach for it to combine with other palettes. I just, I, I don't. So, and I know I'm not going to, so I'm going to pass that along. Then we have, this is the Sample Beauty, the Equalizer Volume 2. Um, I was just always really curious about Sample Beauty. Um, so I really wanted to try an eyeshadow palette from them. And so I grabbed this one um, and it is really beautiful. Um, nice, nothing wrong with the formula. I think it is a great palette, but I don't know. I just, I don't really foresee myself grabbing this. Like, you know, it, um, it, I do love like this, like berry rosy kind of, uh, row and then just sort of the pops of peach and pink, um, in it. Um, I think this would be a really great, like glam palette for someone, but I'm already keeping enough palettes for that reason that I don't think I need this one too. So I am going to pass that along as well. And then we have, this is the only palette I own from A Dose of Colors. This is the Sassy Siennas. Um, I still remember when they did these palettes, I wanted this one especially just so bad. I just loved, um, I feel like at the time, it's like when like peaches and corals were really starting to take off. Um, everyone just wanted the, those colors, um, those shades. And uh, I just really gravitated toward this um, one in particular uh, with these. I don't remember all the other ones that they did, uh, but I was able to finally get this. I think, again, I got it through like a boxy charm, um, like pop-up sort of shop thing, whatever, at a really good price. But I never reached for it, and I just don't think I ever will. So passing that along. This is um, the only CoverGirl palette I have, and I think the only one I've ever tried. Um, this is the uh, CoverGirl True Naked That's Rad palette. Um, I think it's a really fun, I'll open it up even though you can already kind of see the color story there. Um, I think it is really fun, especially uh, color story, especially for a drugstore palette. Um, but it's just, the shades just, the formula is not so amazing that I feel the need to hold on to this. Um, I got it. I created a look with it. I played with it a little bit and I've never touched it again. So I think I just might as well pass that along. Uh, then we have, this is um, from e.l.f. This is one of the bite-sized palettes they had. I used to have just about every single one of these and I ended up a while ago decluttering all of them except this one. This is the um, hot jalapeno one. Let's open it up. So as you can see, it's like a just monochromatic green palette. It is really beautiful. The formula is nice, uh, but it's like a basically a quad, you know, uh, and um, I just don't really reach for quads at all. And it's not like the formula is just 
so amazing that I am inspired to use this. So I think it's done sitting around in my collection, not being used. And then we have the, uh, from Lux B uh, Aesthetics, this is the Lux Cosmic Palette. And it is a beautiful, um, mostly like, well, I guess, I guess it's almost half and half. Uh, I was going to say uh, mostly shimmers, but I think the shimmers just beat out by one. Um, it's got some beautiful matte shades there and some really nice shimmers. Um, I really like this palette. I haven't played with it a ton since I got it, um, but I really think that the shades in here are magical. And plus, like, this is a, um, a you know, very new um, and, like, small indie brand that I just love being able to support a small business, um, woman-owned business. Uh, so I am going to definitely hold on to this and look forward to hopefully maybe trying some more of their stuff in the future. Um, I think I run into sometimes with some of these small brands, like as much as I love supporting them, the only one thing that problem I run into is being in Canada is that because they're small brands I do find that um, sometimes like the shipping that they're able to offer is just not really that great especially like for an international customer so um, I just I can't <laughs> I can't afford like the shipping uh, for a lot of them so I do hope to own more from them one day but as of right now that's what I have but I'm gonna hold on to it um, and then we have from Huda Beauty um, Again, I've had other palettes from them and I have declared them, but I still have this one. This is the Mercury Retrograde. It really is just like a neutral palette with a pop of blue, but I don't know. There's just something about this one that I, I can't get rid of it. I don't know if I'll ever be able to get rid of it, even though I don't reach for it. I just, at least as of right now, I, I can't say goodbye to that. And then we have uh, from Indie Beat Cosmetics, they did a Goblin King palette. Um, they basically more or less did like a, well, like Labyrinth, but like um, more focused around the Goblin King uh, collection. And I um, just grabbed the palette because I can resist. Like Labyrinth is my favorite <laughs> movie uh, sleeve that I started forever ago and have yet to finish. Um, and so I just had to get this. Um, it's not like the most like out of this world color story and even the formula like you know it's good um it's not uh like something where it's so amazing that I just can't wait to play with it again uh but it is nice and I just for me I bought this more so just because of the theme and nostalgia for that um I just not labyrinth isn't something that I think a lot of brands gravitate towards creating something around um and so I had to get this my husband and I fun fact danced to as the world falls down as our wedding song so I love labyrinth never getting rid of this probably uh then we have from cosmic brushes and I think I heard recently that they've now changed their name to cosmic beauty uh, uh correct me if i'm wrong with that um but we have the uh serenity palette um my shade up here um I think this is oasis it says uh it's a little bit a little bit crumbly and shattered but it still works fine as long as i'm just like delicate with the palette um i really love this i think it's a beautiful color story um i don't i don't even know how to describe it like it's got some sort of like garden feels but it's like a little bit grungy with it too like I don't know I really like it I want to try more from the brand so bad um I've almost ordered numerous palettes but the, just the timing is just never right but one day I do plan on hopefully picking up I, I really want the gothic and the delicious delights and the muse palette um almost all of them I don't I think I could live without like the newest like winter wonderland one and not because it's not beautiful but just because I uh it's not exactly a color story that screams to me, but I have this Randy palette and I am continuing to have this Randy palette. Next, we have the two palettes that I own from Urban Decay. I used to have many more of the Naked palettes um, and I've just slowly learned that I didn't really care for the formula enough to play with them, so I slowly declared them. We have the Naked Cherry, which I think when it comes to the Naked palettes is still one of my favorites. Um, but I decided to keep that Marc Jacobs palette, which to me is this one, but just a bit more um, curated. Uh, and I just, I don't know, I just never reach for this. So 
going to pass that along. And then we have the Urban Decay and Robin Eisenberg. Yeah, Eisenberg. Um, I think that's, uh, they're an artist. I don't really know um, that much about them, but I saw the um, packaging and I just really kind of kept looking at this palette. Um, I saw the inside and I was sort of like, oh, I don't know, maybe, maybe I don't need that. Um, and then I don't, I think like at Shoppers, I just had enough points to be able to grab this without actually spending any money on it. So I decided to pick it up and I used it once and have had no desire to use it again. So I'm just not going to keep a palette like that in my collection. So passing that along. Then we have the two palettes that I have from uh, Kate, well, it was Kat Von D Beauty at the time that I got these. Um, now it's KVD Beauty. Um, I haven't gotten any of their new palettes um, since kind of, you know, ownership switched and like rebranding and all of that. Uh, but I had these. So we have the Pastel Goth palette, which I held on to this for so long just because oh, I just loved like the theme of it. Um, and I just thought that the undertones to these were really beautiful, but it's not like the formula was ever amazing. And I just, I don't know. It's not like the packaging and theme is so wonderful that I should just hold on to it on my shelf without ever using it. Um, so I think it's time that I just let this go. Oh, geez. And then we have the, uh, collab with Divine. And I just thought this was really a really cool color story. Of course, was super drawn to this uh, pink flamingo shade. Um, just all the shades in general. Like it was a really great color story. Um, it performed nicely, but I just I have not used this in forever, and I just have so many other amazing color stories in my collection that it's just time to say goodbye. Okay, moving on to Ace Beauté. Um, I think sort of like kind of 50 50 some of these i got directly from the website and a good chunk of these were ones that um, i came across on boxycharm and was just able to get them for a really good price so i built up my collection um so first we have the um grand Ois, grand Ois palette uh it's this one here um it's pretty little like you know eight pan color story um very like you know nice shades but nothing super amazing so I am going to declutter that. Next we have the quintessential palette. This one's definitely a little bit more interesting um, but I I think this is before they started really like kind of having some palettes that were just truly amazing in color story and formula um, so I just I never reach for this and I don't think I ever will so I'm going to pass that along. Uh, Next, let's go, let's go with this one. So this is the Ace BT Falling For You. Um, this is what it looks like. Beautiful, warm toned, autumn sort of palette. Um, I feel like I have these tones again and again and other palettes that I am holding on to that I enjoy the formula so much more on. So I am going to pass that along. <laughs> this is not looking great for Ace BT in my collection. Um, then we have the Vintage Dawn open that up. Here it is. Nice. I don't know. I just, you know what? I'm just going to get right to it. I, I don't really love this color story. Um, again, it was something where I picked it up on a whim from BoxyCharm and I just didn't really know maybe then what my uh, taste in um, both formula and like just color story even so because it's like none of these palettes are like a bad formula, uh, but just like the color story. Um, I just know better now what I enjoy. Um, here is the Scarlet Dusk, which, oh look, another palette I never touched. Um, this one is definitely a, a lot more up my alley than the previous ones. I think I swatched maybe a couple of these, uh, but I don't think I've ever created a look with this, and I just don't think I will, so I think I can just happily pass that along. Then we have you know what? I must have, I think, I think actually if I remember correctly, I did get rid of it. I used to have the Oceanic palette and I never thought I would part with that because I absolutely adore that color story. And the only reason I got rid of it was just because the formula was just, 
I don't know, it wasn't performing good anymore. Uh, so I don't know if I just like gotten old and turned or whatever. Um, I'd be tempted if I um, like place an order with them in the future of maybe picking that one up again. Um, there's a few palettes that they've released since that I've been super interested in, uh, but uh, didn't really use a lot of these ones. So I was just like, I probably shouldn't get more from the brand, but I don't know, maybe now that I'm kind of cleaning up my Ace Beauté collection, narrowing it down, I can, order some of the ones that are more appealing. Here we have the Flare palette. Um, I totally bought this because of Batty Bean. Uh, she just always went on and on about how much she loved this palette and I really loved it too. Um, I think it's really, really pretty, but I never reach for this and it's just gotten quite old. So I think it's time for me to let that one go. And then we have the Nostalgia palette, which um, this is really nice, but it's basically a rainbow palette, and I just am not super interested in reaching for it in the Ace Beauté formula, so nothing against the brand, but gonna gonna let that one go as well. Okay, moving on to Lunar Beauty. Here is the Strawberry Dream palette. I love this color story so much and I've had so much fun playing with this and I really like the formula. Uh, so I'm going to hold on to that one. And then we have the Moonspell Volume 1 and then also Volume 2. Um, here, I love the packaging on this so much. Like, I don't care, even if this like goes bad or whatever, like I am never getting rid of these palettes solely because of packaging. Um, but this is what the... Uh, it looks like it's always so hard to show off because of that gold background, um, but really beautiful. Um, is it my absolute favorite formula? No. Um, I think particularly like this palette's just gotten a bit old and it doesn't perform as nicely anymore, um, but I still really love it and I think it is super unique to my collection. So holding on to that one. And then we have the Moonspell Volume 2. Ooh, let's put that in backwards. <laughs> Here is this one. Again, hard with the gold background, but um, just really beautiful. Uh, a lot heavier in like the pinks and reds um, and even like some more purples in this. Um, just really nice uh, color story. Love it. Um, don't really know what else to say. I just think these were great releases. I would absolutely be thrilled if Manny would come out with a, another volume to this because I think he could really have amazing places to go with this line. Moving on to Give Me Glow. So the first palette I ever got from them, the Vintage Rose. I love this still to this day, even though I haven't reached for it in a while. I think this is amazing. Um, they don't have, like, they have a, a great matte formula, um, at least with... <laughs> most of these aside from one palette we'll get to, uh, but um, their shimmers are definitely where they shine, <laughs> no pun intended. Um, but I also find it really neat um, that with their matte formula, uh, this is definitely a, a brand where I utilize using these shades on my face too, like whether it's one of the shimmers for like a highlight or one of the mattes for a blush. I just really love that it has like that dual purpose sort of to it. Um, I still really love this and so I'm keeping that. And then we have the sister palette, the Vivid Rose. I love how this plays off of the Vintage Rose but definitely is more vivid. Uh, the purples and bright pinks in this, I just think the um, shades that they went with are really lovely and I really enjoy this palette a whole lot. Uh, I guess we'll do this one next. I don't really like do singles a whole lot, but one brand, um, I do have some other ones in here, like these, this bottom row here is like from Terra Moon. Um, the only ones I have from them, not going anywhere, I love these. I really need to utilize them more in my collection. And then I think this is a ColourPop pressed glitter that um, I've gotten a while ago and I just still really like the shade. Uh, and then all of these, except for this one, this is Sugar Pill Sleepwalker. Um, but all the rest of these are all Give Me Glow. Um, this one right here uh, is Electric Unicorn, I think it's called. Yes, Electric Unicorn, and I adore it. Um, that and like Party Monster are probably my absolute favorites. Um, I love these. I need to actually keep them over 
kind of in my workspace so I remember to use them more because I freaking adore these. There's some of their other ones that I really want to get still. All right, and then we have the Bad Witch Club palette. Um, I really wanted to love this palette. I love the theme, I love the color story, but so far I do not love the formula. Um, I have yet to have a look where I did not struggle super hard with this. Um, the mattes just always go super patchy, don't blend easily, they don't layer well. I just find it's really hard to work with them. Um, I just, I don't know. I don't know what the deal is, but oh, I just also have a hard time letting go of this because I just really love the idea of this palette so much. Um, I'm going to put my maybe pile, but I don't know. It might just be time to give up on this one. Next, we have my Kaleidos uh, palettes. Uh, start off with, we have the Flower Punk. Um, as I mentioned with the um, that Spoiled Lips Cosmetics palette, I don't really like palettes that have this. Like, I can understand, like, the idea of where they're coming from, that maybe it's easier with, like, the mirror and stuff. Um, and kudos to the brand for trying to do something differently, but I do not love that. Um, although I have not reached for this palette a lot, I do think that it unfortunately just kind of got lost in my collection um, just once it wasn't brand new anymore. Uh, I still really like this color story, um, so I'm going to hold on to that one. And then we have the Futurism palettes. Um, unfortunately, I didn't get all of them before they were discontinued. Um, I wish I had all of them because uh, I really like these. I love the um, format. Um, I love the formula. <laughs> I just really enjoy these. So I'm definitely holding on to all of these. I'm really sad that uh, the brand isn't doing these anymore. I really think that this is this was their roots and this is what they need to come back to because you know fine like they can explore and like go whatever path they want to go down but I really think a lot of people really loved the brand the most when they were doing this so that's what I feel like I hear a lot uh so I I hope that they come back to this at some point uh but just to show the ones I have um this is the Futurism 3 um Astro Pink like the packaging is just so stunning um, and that is the color story. I think it's just a lot of fun. Um, I still look at this and just really get inspired by it um, and just want to play with it still. So holding on to that, <laughs> holding on to all of them. Uh, then we have the Futurism 6. I'm not doing these in order, obviously. Uh, this is the Lunar Lavender. Um, so definitely a bit softer of a color story, but I just really love the purples and even the, the two browns that they put in there, I think are just a really great fit for this. Um, I think this is really beautiful and I still really enjoy it. And then we have the, what number is this? The uh, Futurism 5. This is the Electro Turquoise. Um, I definitely think that this is um, one of the most interesting color stories that they did. Um, this one actually almost kind of reminds the like glam light, um, like Frosted Flakes palette sort of reminds me of a larger uh, version of this. So if you weren't able to get this and you can still get that palette um, and you really like the color story, that might be a way to get your hands on it. Uh, but I think this is really cool. I think it's really fun and really enjoyed that. And then the last feature is the one I have is the Futurism 7 uh, Sashimi City. I'll try to open these up. Ugh, get the names out of the way. Um, I hate it when brands though that's one thing I don't like is I don't like when brands put the names on these sheets because I just want to get rid of those uh anyways <laughs> I digress I think this is really pretty although it's a very neutral palette I think the two shimmers that they popped in here are just really something special and I think really elevate it from being just your average neutral palette so I really like this a lot still and am still uh wanting to play with that and then uh the only uh palette I ever got in like this format. This is the uh, one I did with Angelica Nikvist, uh, the Club Nebula. And 
this is what it looks like. Um, the packaging is quite bulky. I don't love that about it, but the color story is really beautiful. And then I also just love um, like a lot of the names that she went with in this just really speak to me. Um, she's also a Star Wars fan. So there's some Star Wars references in here. Uh, I love that. I just think it's a really fun color story and I just love having this in my collection. So holding on to that. All right, guys, we're getting there. If you've stuck through this long, good for you. <laughs> um, next, we have my Lethal Cosmetics palettes. Um, for these ones, I've held onto the sleeves for like all of them except for this one. I know they look the same because it's the same sort of um, like palette component. Um, this is the only one I didn't hold on to because it was the um, only custom palette I've ever done with them and so it didn't have a name. Uh, so I didn't see the need to hold on to that. Uh, but this is a custom palette I made. I just really love the shades I selected. I just love the Lethal Cosmetics formula. Um, both their mattes and shimmers are just lovely. I am dying to try um, their like multi-chrome uh, shades and they're just more sparkly metallics that they've come out with more recently. Um, I just again timing <laughs> there's always always something else and so you have to like pick and choose and just unfortunately uh, getting something else from them has taken uh, a bit of a backseat, but I really do want to try some new stuff from the brand. Um, love their shadows, so um, want more from them. I'm definitely keeping that. Um, and then the rest of these are all like pre-made uh, palettes. I don't recall right now if these two are still available. I do believe this last one though, the Night Flower is. Uh, but this one here is the Velvet Dusk palette. And so again, it has like the name and that on the back. That's why I kept the sleeve for this. So this is what that palette looks like. Um, definitely just like some nice like sort of colorful but grungy tones. I just really love this color story and had a lot of fun with this. So keeping... And then we have, this is the After Dark, just a very sort of like retro vibe. It came with like these cute stickers that you could uh, decorate your palette with. So I did. Oh, and I didn't mention it with the other ones, but a um, uh, neat thing with Lethal Cosmetics is they do have like the holes on the back, like similar to if you've ever had like uh, Natasha Denona palette, there's like the holes on the back so you could like poke out the shades because they're all magnetized in there if you want to rearrange them. I don't like rearranging my palettes um, just because I like keeping them where the names are. Not that that's helpful with these ones because they don't have the names on like the palettes themselves at least with the versions like the ones I have um but uh I like keeping them where they are I just like the way the color stories are already made up but if you are someone that wants to rearrange them uh this is definitely I just feel phone storage so I'm not sure where we cut off there but uh really really enjoy this and keeping this palette I'm just trying to get them back in and then we have the night flower palette which is probably my absolute favorite one I have from them I just adore this color story this shade right here is just magical um if you can tell from how I've spoken about a lot of palettes I definitely like my blues and purples and I adore this I really want to get I think it's like the wildflower which is like the sister palette to this I really want to get that at some point too Okay, next going into my P. Louise palettes. So we have their two Halloween ones. I already, just to save time, pre went and opened them up, but they are locked with a little kind of heart lock and key. Um, so these are quite bulky, but they are double-sided palettes. Um, not going to get too much into these because they're new to my collection. I love the theme and I'm definitely keeping them, but that is the Hocus Pocus Regain Focus palette. And I just really love that one. Um, and then we have the Droplet of Magic, uh, which is goes like this. So definitely um, a bit more uh, cool tone, at least on that side. Um, and then we have like your purples and like some more oranges and stuff there. Really pretty. Um, I really like this and I can't wait to play with these more. Those out of the way. And then we have the Money Shot palette. Um, this is a big palette um, and it's very it's monochromatic green basically with some like gold hints and stuff. Um, it's not something I reach for a ton, but I really have um, been loving the P. Louise formula, so um, I'm not ready to really let go of anything 
from them in my collection yet, but just to show what I have. Then this is the uh, Watch the Queen Conquer. Uh, so we have this side here, which is just like purples and pinks. Um, probably between some of these, there they become a little bit repetitive, um, and I probably could <laughs> whittle down my collection, but as of right now, I'm just not ready to make that decision. So there's the other side. And then the only other one I have from them, this isn't a color story I normally would have grabbed just because it is pretty neutral. This is a Blend Away 2022. Uh, but I just, I don't know, the more I looked at it, I just loved the mix of like the pinks and berries and like the peaches. Uh, so like, yes, this could have been edited down quite a bit in my opinion. It didn't need to be this big, but it was on, it's already like not a terrible price for P. Louise. And this was, they were having a really great sale on it where it was like $20. Uh, so I just, I, I bought it, I grabbed it, I've had fun playing with it so far, and I look forward to playing with it some more. Okay, I think we just have like two brands left, but I do own several palettes from both, so we're getting there. Um, I don't think there's really much in the way from either of these brands that I'm going to be getting rid of, but this is my like collection slash declutter, so I really just want to show everything I currently have. So next is Natasha Denona. Um, I've recently gotten a lot more of her palettes just because I think they were like leaving Sephora Canada um, and aren't still fully gone from there, but like everything they have palette-wise at least especially keeps going on sale. I'm really tempted to grab the Metropolis, but I just feel like it's the collection like just collectionist or whatever in me that wants it even though it is beautiful um but uh I came across a lot of these just because they were on a really good sale like basically 50% off and I just grabbed a bunch of them that uh to fill the voids in my collection uh so this one I actually got from BoxyCharm this is the Jubilee palette um, and this one I actually am going to part with. Um, I didn't think I was going to get rid of it. I thought I would hold on to it just for like comparisons. Um, but I'm just not likely to really utilize it in that way. And I don't really use it for looks because I just don't think it's a very cohesive, um, or versatile color story. So that I can pass along. Um, pretty sure the rest of these are staying. Um, as I was just saying with the lethal, like, so the Natasha Denona palettes are all magnetized. So you can poke out the, um, sheets and mix them up if you want. So this is one of her midi palettes and this is the My Dream palette and it is just so beautiful and dreamy. I adore the Natasha Denona formula um, and so I just really love these shades. Um, just like this also a multi-chrome in her shades um, which especially compared to just when we get to it the trio chrome palette like this is actually like really pretty decent multi-chrome. Um, I just think it's really beautiful and nice and so holding on to that. Then we have the Retro Glam palette. Um, definitely a bit more like kind of soft greens. Um, I just really like this color story. I really like the color selection. Um, I believe that's what I just said. Duh. Um, I think it's a lot of fun and I do look forward to playing with this some more. Then we have the Love palette. Um, I just, again, really like the color story. I think this is fun, pretty, performs beautifully. What more could I say? Uh, then we have the Z, uh, Zendo, I almost said Zeno, uh, Zendo palette. Um, this is probably like my least favorite amongst these, but I still really do like it. I think it's a lot of fun. Um, and so I uh, definitely want to hold on to this and play with it some more in my collection. And then we have the pastel palette. Um, I think this is a really fun version of a pastel palette. I think it's different. Um, and so I think it really adds to my collection and I like having these shades in her formula. Then we have the retro palette, which there's a reason why this is a huge fave. Um, I ended up grabbing this one. Uh, I was like torn between this and the My Dream and I grabbed this one at the time and I absolutely love it. Happy with that. And now I'm happy to have both in my collection, but really adore this, like this perfect like date night palette. And then we have um, some of her larger palettes. This is the Trio Chrome. Um, really pretty. I think it's a fun, interesting color story. The like multi-chromes or whatever you want to call them um, in the middle there are nothing special like they're just glorified shimmer shades uh, but they are it, it is a fun color story still and I'm just happy to have that. The Tropic palette I probably could the color this one 
I don't know. There's just something about it that I'm just not ready to let go of yet. Maybe it's just because um, I think I did spend like a bit more money on this one. Um, I think I still got it on sale, uh, but I just, I don't know. There's just something about it. I just can't let go of it yet. So I'm going to hold on to that. Then we have the is it Lila or Lila palette. Uh, I really, really love this. This was, um, I think, one of the first ones I ever got from the brand. Um, I just love how like moody um, these shades are. I just really, really love this still. So holding on to that. And then we have the Sunset palette, which um, was on a ridiculously good sale. Like I think this was down from like $170 Canadian down to like 50 or something. And I just couldn't pass that up. Um, I haven't really played with it at all yet. I need to dig into this. Um, again, they're warm tones, not always drawn to those, but I really love the Natasha Denona formula. There's just something about it that just makes even shades that I'm not normally drawn to just magical to work with. So I look forward to playing with this in the future. Okay, last section of palettes. Um, these are my Pat McGrath Labs palettes. And for how much they cost, I cherish these. Even though on the most part, I think I've gotten just about every single one like on sale. I don't think I've paid full price for a single one of these, um, but let's dig into it. Um, first, one of the first uh, palettes I ever got from the brand, this is the Pat McGrath Mothership Subversive Levion Rose. Um, just really love this color story. I think it's really fun. I love how the shadows perform. Um, probably like amongst my collection, these, I have this one, I have one other small one um, that I could probably part with. Um, and maybe in the future I will, but as of right now, I'm just not ready to say goodbye to any of my Pat McGraths. And then we have one of the motherships. I guess I could do all these together, but this is how I'm choosing to do this. Uh, so this is the um, Pat McGrath uh, Mothership. They're all Pat McGrath, obviously. This is the Mothership 3 Subversive. Um, so this is, I guess, sort of like the larger version of that one. Um, I just, this is super pretty. I just think that uh, when it comes to her color stories and just how like very pink and pink neutral she's gone with a lot of them I think this was a really dynamic color story for the brand uh really beautiful um the uh, special shades are are definitely special like not the most special when it comes to comparing to other um indie brands out there but I still think that for a mainstream high-end luxury brand they are pretty darn special so that. And then I guess just to, before we move on to the other mothership, motherships, just to do it, um, this is the Mothership Subliminal um, Dark Star. Really beautiful. I really loved this color story, just how dark and moody it is. And I still really like these shades, um, especially this one here. Um, I can't remember what it's called. I think it's Interstellar. Um, really beautiful shade. I think this is a lot of fun and I just still enjoy having that in my collection. And then just the rest of my motherships. So this is the Mothership 5 Bronze Seduction. And I kept the outer packaging for these palettes because they are beautiful. Um, this is nice and this is luxe, but it's just like, it is just plain black, but it is, this feels luxurious. Uh, this is the color story for that. So gorgeous. I need to play with these more. Um, I just don't, it's, Pat McGrath isn't a, brand that I reach for when I'm doing like more crazy creative looks which is what I do more so for my like Instagram and that um so I just don't really think to grab these but they are really beautiful and I love how they perform uh next we have the mothership uh nine I think this is utopian dream this one I think like of this is like I would call this like her unicorn magic <laughs> palette. Uh, so beautiful. I really love this. Um, just stunning. These shimmers are just mind-blowingly gorgeous. I adore them. Love this palette. What else can I say? It is amazing. So that's all I have for motherships because the mothership palettes are really expensive and even on sale. Um, they are really expensive unless you are lucky and when they had like that glitch kind of thing happen I was able to get two of those mothership palettes for like really cheap. 
Um, this is the one of the Mothership Megas. Um, I think this was like the first one of these that they did. This is the Celestial Divinity palette. And it looks like that. I really think this is a beautiful color story. And I think the shimmers, shimmers in here are still really spectacular. Um, the mattes perform beautifully. Uh, I love the color selection and want to hold on to that and play with it some more. And then I never got the middle one and I kind of regret that. Um, but this was the third one they did. Um, this one's actually called like an artistry palette. What's it? Oh no, it's still called Mothership Mega Celestial Nirvana. I thought it was still along that line. Anyways, really beautiful. Um, love the color story in this too. I think it's her way of trying to do something really fun and colorful. Um, and yeah, I think it's really pretty and I want to play with this more. I almost closed out this whole video and realized that I still had a huge stack of maybes. So... <laughs> Let's revisit these. I'm going to try to be cutthroat about this. I, I got to be realistic. I just, I still have a ton of palettes I kept and I don't have room for things I'm not going to use. So the Anastasia Beverly Hills Sultry Palette, it is going. Same with the Prism Palette one. I hate this packaging and it's just, it's not special enough for me to hold on to. So it's going to go. I'm also... Oh, Am I? Yes, I'm, I'm parting ways with these ones. I'm, I held on to the air ones. I still really like it, but I don't need that in my collection. Um, the Nikki tutorials, I feel like I'm just so on the fence about it still. I'm not ready to make a decision. So I am going to hold on to that one for now. Um, the ColourPop Lush Life. Ooh. No, I don't need it. It can go. Um, the It's a Mood. This one is beautiful. I'm going to hold on to that one. The uh, Too Faced. Uh, what is this again? Born This Way, Sunset Stripped. It's just, you know what, it's the only thing I have from them right now, and I think I want to see if I use it, so I am going to hold on to that. Um, I think same thing with, like, the Lois Cosmetics. I'm just not ready to make a decision about this, um, although I haven't touched it in quite a while. Who knows? I'll, I think I'm going to wait and see whether or not I utilize this um, with some more time passing, and then if I still don't, then next time maybe it'll be time to say goodbye to that. Uh, Cara Beauty, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let that one go. Uh, this Spoiled Lips Cosmetics one. Same thing. I think I'm gonna let that go. I just, it's not a color story I'm interested in. Uh, this Carnival palette, I'm also gonna let this one go. I feel like just within the Carnival palettes, I have this color story. Uh, doo -doo -doo, the Jade palette. I am, I'm gonna let this one go too. I just, I don't use it. And actually I filled up all the little slot spots I had my Beauty Bay in. So if I get rid of these, I don't have the uh, overspill <laughs> of that. So I think also with the Fiery palette, I'm gonna let this go. I think I don't need this large of a warm tone palette and I don't really like wearing warm tones. Um, the two Michaela palettes, uh, I just, I really love the Glam Light formula, so I just, I'm not ready to let go of those yet. Yeah, I'm just, I'm not ready to let go of them yet, so I'm going to hold on to those. Oh, same, I think same thing with this Gimme Glow, although I have not been able to make it work. I feel like I'm going to try one more time at least to see if I can get a good eye look out of this, and if I still can't, then it'll be time to say goodbye. And then this Rude Cosmetics, like I feel like I'd hold on to this just for this one shade and I shouldn't hold on to it just for that one shade. But I also kind of want to have, I think this along with the pastel one I'm keeping from them, I think would be a nice combination. So I want to hold on to it and see if maybe I will get some use out of it and try to focus in on it. So there we go. Now we are actually done. Um, kind of split that up pretty evenly. Um, 
Again, I will get numbers and have them on the screen in the outro about what I had to begin with, what I decluttered, and what I'm left with in the end. And yeah, I hope you enjoy this. Whew, all right, we made it. So that was my eyeshadow palette declutter for 2023. Wow, I am really happy with how that all ended up. I think we did a great job of just helping to reduce my collection um, to more so like palettes that I know I'm going to use or that I still like have an interest in playing with and creating with because that's what I want in my collection. I don't want things just on the shelf to be on the shelf. Um, I'm sure I probably still held on to some that I shouldn't have, but... I don't I also don't want to get rid of something just to get rid of it um, I just really wanted to let palettes that I was not using anymore and was just very unlikely ever going to use again um, or have used at all to move on to people um, that I know uh, my sisters I know that they all love makeup too and I just would love to share the love with them uh, for you know let them let them have some fun Anyways, I'm rambling. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I also forgot to mention in my intro that I did a reels on this look. So if you wanna see what I used and how I created this, then make sure to check that out on my Instagram and TikTok, Spooky Mama Glam on both those platforms as well. Um, if you like this video, I hope you give it a like, leave a comment down below. Let me know if there's any of the palettes that I got rid of that maybe are your faves or maybe you felt the same way. Um, any of the ones I kept that are also your favorites or maybe you didn't like the ones that I kept. Um, I'd love to have a discussion down in the comments below, but like friend friendly. <laughs> friendly discussion. Uh, and uh, if you aren't already, I would love it if you considered subscribing. I would love to have you stick around for more of my videos. I really am trying to get stuff out there on the regular, doing my best, uh, and just trying to mix it up a bit too. And I always do just eyeshadow tutorials because um, I know it's fun to watch some other content. I know I like to watch other content than just tutorials. So trying to get that out there. Uh, and yeah, if you liked this, then... I'm glad you made it to the end, and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye!